crown jewel of the state of Alabama, Birmingham. We have SIAC football brought to you by Aspire Television. It is Albany State Golden Rams on the road as they take on the Miles College Golden Bears right here in Fairfield, Alabama. Hello, everybody. I'm James Verrett, along with two-time Super Bowl champion and former Fort Valley State Wildcat, but you never form. You always you a Wildcat? Form. Always a Wildcat. And with Tyrone Poole and Tyrone, how does it feel to be back in the SIAC for our three-game package with Aspire? It feels great. Tradition, tradition, tradition. That's all I can say about HBCU football and being here watching Miles and Albany State plays brings back a lot of memories. Now that's one of your rivals, Albany State Golden Rams. They are led by a running back who may be small in stature, but he is very big as far as output for the Rams in McKinley Hambersham. Yeah, Hambersham. If you want to get a first down, you got three downs to get a first down, give it to this guy twice. He's averaging 5.3 yards a game. So give it to him, you're going to get a first down. Now to stop him, it's Miles College Golden Bears defense. Kalen Bonds is the defensive guy. He can score points, get to the quarterback. He's a little bit of everything. Yeah, this guy Bond, he gets up early. He sets the tone for the team and for himself. So look for him to be one of the drive leaders for this victory for Miles today if they are to get it. Both teams are 2-2 two and two for Albany State. They're trying to get back on the winning track for Miles College. They're trying to improve to a three-game win streak. When we come back, we'll have kickoff as the SIAC takes center stage on Aspire. Football right here, coming up next. And as the sun sets here in Fairfield, Alabama, we are awaiting kickoff. Albany State won the toss and defers, which means the Golden Bears, homestanding Golden Bears of Miles College will receive. And the head coach for the Golden Rams in his first season, Gabe Gardenia. He comes from Charleston Southern, where he was the offensive coordinator and offensive line coach. And so far, Tyrone, he's just beaten one of the perennial powerhouse in Valdosta State and also beaten one of the perennial powers in the SIAC in Tuskegee, but he's sort of fallen on hard times, two straight losses. Yeah, Coach Gard Gardenia coming in uh, first year at Albany State. Uh, he's going to bring his philosophy uh, and he's going to smash my football. And you see the uh, red ribbon there by Reginald Ruffin. They are in support of sickle cell anemia research, but Reginald Ruffin has brought championship style football to Miles College in his seventh season. Gabriel Bellinas will kick off for Albany State and SIAC football on Aspire is underway. Miles College will take it at their own seven yard line and quickly knocked out of bounds. Well, stays in bounds at about the 26 for about a 15 yard return. Special teams gonna play a very, very valuable part in uh, today's game. We talked to both coaches uh, and uh, Coach Gardenia is going to put more emphasis on the punt return and uh, punt team unit. So uh, Miles College, they're going to try to put emphasis on the kickoff and uh, punt coverage. So look for special teams to be a valuable part of today's game. And right now, quick change at quarterback. Instead of LeJean Guardier, we will have Sidney Wilson in, the freshman in at quarterback, six feet, 215 pounds. He's only played in about one or two other games so far this season, trying to get an offensive spark going up against a defense that likes to be known as Dirty Blue, I think that's our own. The Dirty Blue, they out to try to play hard today. Let's see. And cut back, great move there, and positive yards for the Golden Bears, enough for the first down. And let's take a look, and that was Darrell Freeman, another junior from Miles College. Yeah, you see here again last week, the coach said, uh, Coach Gardenia emphasized the guys being better tacklers, stand up on their feet, and already Miles is taking advantage of that. Once again, the Freeman. Freeman gets to the line of scrimmage, but this time he is met by a wall of gray and yellow jerseys. Good stop there for the Rams, Emmanuel Brown on the tackle. Yeah, again, you come out, you start with two runs in a row to test them again. Albany State comes up big on this one, makes it a uh, long, manageable uh, second and long. Wilson getting the calls from the sideline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Once again, the Freeman on the near side, and he's going to break the line of scrimmage and go nowhere fast. This time, Nick Scott, the senior from LFL, Georgia, right there to stand him up and a little pushing and shoving because this is a crucial matchup in the SIAC. And you see those guys there on the tackle along with Emmanuel Brown. Yeah, anytime you're going to stop the run, you got to have a force guy, you got to have a field guy. And you see right here, Auburn State comes in, they have a great contain, guy comes up and uh, fills it and stops Miles again. Now they're looking at a good, uh, long, pretty much manageable third down. Wilson went a third and long with four, five wide receivers. Looking to throw, get some pressure, long pass incomplete. Pass intended for Antonio Lee, the young man from Mobile, Alabama, but a little bit too far. A punting situation, three and out for Albany State's dirty blue defense, and that's what they want to do. And Coach Ruffin for miles, he is not necessarily happy with that opening stanza for his offense. Yeah, I think uh, Albany State actually on that particular play, Cameron McDowell, he actually got away with a little bit of tugging on the receiver jersey there. So I'm <laughs> um, pretty sure Albany State is glad about that. One of the best punters in the conference to punt for Miles College, Nick Christensen. And back deep, Keelan Fraze. And Fraze lets it go through his legs. He will receive it at the five. Bad decision because that purple and gold special teams able to make a big play inside the five. They will mark it at the five-yard line. Yeah. First and foremost, as a punt returner, I punt return myself in the league and in college. You never let the ball hit the ground. You catch every ball that's punted to you. And this was a big mistake by the punt returner not receiving that ball and catching it. Fraze only had his longest return has only been seven yards, so not necessarily known as one that's going to electrify, but you see Coach Gardenia right there trying to let him know most likely the same thing you it, said, exactly. catch the ball. Now, the great thing about this, Miles College, Coach Ruffin said he wants Albany State to drive the length of the field, so hey, here's the first test, the length of the field. Chancellor Johnson, the quarterback for the Golden Rams. First off, they're going to start with a run and get a lot of room to run and running is Mr. Hammersham. We talked about him in the pregame. McKinley Hammersham out to close to the 40-yard line. First down for the Golden Rams. Yeah, Hammersham. Here, this offense that they run is called a gun spread option. So on this particular offense, you got to have somebody for every one. They have to dive, the pitch, and the quarterback. And here, Albany State, Hammersham hits a crease and turns a big return, a big run for Albany State. Sets them up beautifully. They are out of their own hole, first and 10 at the 38. Going to go with the option. Johnson pitches it out to Fraze, and Fraze this time is met by some purple jerseys. May have gained one yard. Now, the, the key here, you've got to make the quarterback make a quick decision. Make him make an indecisive decision and so that the defense can corral the football. And on this particular play, Miles did a great job, make the quarterback make a decision, pitch it, and that makes it an easy tackle for the outside guy. Redshirt freshman Chancellor Johnson, yes, he does stand about 6'5", 6'6". Rare to see a quarterback that tall running the option, but he's done well so far. That's a tall drink of water, huh? And right now, they're drinking more than water. They got some nitro in their veins. Another inside run, first down into Miles College territory, and a huge run again by Habersham. Yeah, Albany State, they are second in the SIAC, running the ball. And here, you're going to see this all day. This is going to be smash mouth football by Albany State. And also, Miles College runs the ball, too. So if you like smash mouth running the football, you're going to get a handful of it today. And it looks like we have a player down for Albany State. Looks like it is number 87, uh, Terrell Whitehead, the tight end from Albany, Georgia. And let's take a look and see if we can figure out what happened over on that play. Yeah, it looked like he just got rolled up. Uh, football, you, the, the pile starts coming your way, and you're trying to do your job, and you actually uh, get, he just got caught up in the action, and hopefully he'll be okay and get back into the game. Check that. That is number 81, Chris Hunt, tight end. And they're bringing him off the field. Looks like he is walking, so that is a good sign. Great sign. 
I always wonder, in film, if your own teammate rolls up on you, do you get upset at him? You, say, you tell him to get out the way next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first and 10 for the Rams in Golden Bear territory. First drive for Albany State. And again, Albany State in this gun spread offense. You're going to see a lot of formations from there. Once again, the Habersham. He breaks the line of scrimmage and more. Down inside the 20, down to the 19-yard line goes McKinley Habersham. He's not big, but you can see he's like an atom. He's all the way through. Again, emphasis has to be on the dive guy. If you can't get the dive, you can't tackle the dive, that's the first uh, option of stopping an option team. Stop the dive. And right now, Miles is having a tough time stopping that dive. Red zone defense has to be at its best right now because the Golden Rams have not been stopped starting at their own five-yard line now inside the 20 of the Golden Bears. Once again, give to Habersham. He breaks the line of scrimmage inside the five, down to the two-yard line goes McKinley Habersham. He has been the workhorse for the Rams on this drive. Yeah. Coach Gardenia, he emphasized that whenever they get into the red zone, they do not want to kick field goals. They want to get touchdowns. So right now, Albany State is setting themselves up, positioning themselves to get a touchdown. And when you get into the red zone, you definitely have to get touchdowns. And uh, Albany, uh, Miles has put themselves in a tough situation here. The defense has to come up big and try to keep them to a field goal. First and goal, ball is at the two. And this time, Johnson on the keeper. He's long enough, good enough, inside the end zone. Touchdown, Golden Rams. Yeah, on this play here, it's, it's tough. You are, you're already as a defense. Your back is against the wall. You're teeing off, and uh, it makes it easier for the quarterback to fake it, and he's really not accounted for in the defensive scheme. And whenever you got a quarterback this big, all he has to do is just get up in the pile and fall forward, and you get a touchdown like you did that you just saw. The young man from Noonan, Georgia, it looks like he is the Trojan horse who gets to hoist the trophy of a touchdown, but it was McKinley Habersham who did a lot of the work towards that drive. Point after attempt by Bellinas. Up and it is good. Timeout on the field. And Chancellor Johnson and the Golden Rams, led by McKinley Habersham, they've been able to drive the length of the field and get into the end zone to strike first blood right here on his spot. And you see Chancellor Johnson, the Redshirt freshman quarterback for Albany State able to get a two-yard touchdown run after a 97-yard opening drive on the road for the Golden Rams. They have definitely set the tone, Tyrone. They have set the tone. I tell you what, Miles College has given up 81% in the red zone, and I think that number just went higher after his first drive. And on the return, trying to find some room. But there is a flag, and yeah, Leonard Tyree on the return. And you hate to see that. Whenever you see that yellow hanky come out, it's back. always on the uh, Number the 83, team. return yeah. team. Out to distance to the goal. First down. And our head referee, Harlan Johnson, along with Raymond Williams, Joshua Tucker, Frankie Jefferson, Michael Phillips, Lawrence Goss, Terrence Isom, and Adronis Thomas rounding off our referee crew for this evening. Now, it's time for the second drive for the Golden Bears of Miles. First drive, three and out. And for those who follow the SIAC, that was the shot heard around the conference as it was Albany State that had numerous threes and outs against Tuskegee and really shut them down for their second victory of the season. Yeah, it's going to be very important that Miles establishes themselves on this particular drive. They've got to slow the game down, get it back to their uh, momentum and the style that they want to play. Right now, Albany State coming off of that first drive, they are really geared and ready to get back on the field offensively. So this is an important drive for the Miles, Miles Golden Bears. They're going to once again give it to Darrell Freeman, who started the first series. And right now, that dirty blue defense and all pewter uniforms with the gold writing, they're there to meet him with a hello Albany style. Emmanuel Brown leading the way. And see, usually when the defense plays off of the offense, when the offense is doing good, the defense come back out, they're energetic, they're rested, and it usually makes it hard for the opposition when the opponent offense is doing so well. Three, three, 
Wilson again on the keeper. He's going to keep it this time, trying to get around on the outside. And this time, once again, Emmanuel Brown from his wheel linebacker position, able to grab and bring down Sidney Wilson. I tell you what, you do not account for the quarterback, but if he decides to run the ball, you got to punish him and make him, every time he go to run that ball, he's not going to want to try to run it. So that is a great tackle. Let him know that he is going to get that all day. <laughs> all right, he brings up a third and short. Last time it was three and out for the Golden Bears. Ken Miles figure out a way to get a, their first first down of the game. Give to Freeman. Freeman this time is wrapped up and freedom is not there for him because the dirty blue is right there to meet him with a tackle and it should be a third now but they may go for it on four. A little bit too early. They're going to change it out and punt it away. Again, Miles, they're not that great third down. Talking to Coach Ruffin, he emphasized that they have been working on third down and they need, you can see him right there rubbing his head. Third down, you got to keep the drive going. If you don't, it'll have you rubbing your head for the rest of the game. Nick Christensen averaging a little bit over 38 yards a punt. Frey still back for Albany State. He's going to call for a fair catch and take it at his own 45-yard line. Good field position for Albany, but according to last drive, it doesn't matter where they are. They started at their own th uh, two, and they went 97 yards. <laughs> exactly. And they are led by a guy that may be the same size as their head coach. Not six feet, but anything under six feet, but definitely a lightning bolt on the field in McKinley Habersham. Yeah, this guy Habersham, he has vision, he has speed. You see him lower his shoulder there expecting a hit, but he's getting through the line of scrimmage to the third level so fast that it, it, no one's there. Habersham once again on the carry, gets beyond midfield into Miles College territory. Looks like he is approaching 100 yards, and we're only in the second series of the first quarter. I think you've got to start looking up what is the record for a uh, season or, or an individual game. This way, the way Habersham is playing right now, he uh, is threatening, and he's pretty much tinkering, uh, telling people that, hey, I'm, I'm looking to have a record day today. This time with the option, they're going to give it to Habersham, but this time he is met by a wall of purple and gold. Austin Stevens, third in the SIAC in tackles, 38 tackles so far on the year. That makes 39. Yeah, now one thing I can say about Miles is defense. Now, Coach Ruffin did play at North Alabama. They ran a triple option, so he is very aware of how to stop this option, and that is one way that you stop that option. You get as many guys to the football as you can, and you saw right there is a bunch of purple jerseys on that tackle. Third down, Tim. Johnson looking to throw getting some pressure. Stevens, the ball is loose. And Albany State able to recover. That's a great play. Great play by Miles' defense. And again, uh, it's very important that you put this type of offense in third and long where you know they got to run. And here they come in, you knock the ball out. Usually when a big guy goes to run to get on the ball, he usually bounces over the ball. But give uh, uh, Albany State an opportunity, a uh, great uh, recovery for them to get on the ball and maintain it and at least punt it away. So usually when you see the big guys like that running to jump on that ball, he usually jump on the ball and then jump over the ball. Tedrick Cofield, the center, able to get that loose ball. And you see Coach Gardenia trying to educate his young quarterback, even though he does stand 6'5", 6'6", with a nice beard there. He's still just a redshirt freshman. Bellin is with the punt. As the sun starts to go down, fair catch called by Miles College, and they will take the ball inside their 20-yard line at about the 18. When we come back, we'll see if Miles can get their offense going as they trail the visiting Albany State Golden Rams by seven. Oh. From you. And the Miles College faithful here in Fairfield, Alabama, as the sun starts to go down here right outside of Birmingham. They're waiting for their offense to ignite. 
Yeah, these guys got to get something started, get it started fast. Wilson on the keeper, and he may have gotten one, possibly two yards. Nick Scott there to lead the way for that dirty blue defense along with Emmanuel Brown. Seems as though Emmanuel Brown's job is to find the ball at any time. Yeah, this dirty blue defense along with the dirty blue offense, I think that's the name we're going to have today uh, after Hammersham finishes. But uh, anytime you can stop the offense from, from gaining positive yards on first down, it makes it better play for the defense coming up on second and third. Seven yards for the first ball hits the ground, but they're still going to try to do a pitch and catch this time intended for Devontae Williams, but they call it an incomplete pass. And it seemed as though Wilson was just going to still try to throw it, even though it did hit the ground. Yeah, you see, anytime the ball, it, 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 football always starts from the center to the quarterback. And when that play messes up, then everything else is rushed and it seems to fall to pieces. And as you saw there, there's a low snap, the ball's on the ground, and the quarterback has to rush, doesn't properly throw the ball with good technique, the ball hits the ground incomplete. And this time they're going to give it to their other small running back, Ja'Carri Jackson, number nine, and he gets enough for the first down. They went from Darrell Freeman, who stands 5'9". They go a little smaller, able to get through that dirty blue defense, and it's Jackson who was to get the first first down for the Golden Bears. Yeah, Kerry Jackson, 5'7", uh, he scoots through, but they're going to have to have plenty of that for the remainder of this game. Uh, to steal the momentum, in my mind, is on his side. So uh, even though that was a big run for Miles, they're going to have to reproduce that uh, along this series uh, to gain some more momentum. And Ja'Carri Jackson started off the year as preseason first team All-SIAC. Now pitch and catch, this time successful to Devontae Williams, able to get about two yards on that ac acrobatic reception. Yeah, roll out here. Tough throw when you're throwing against your body, but he delivers a nice ball. Receiver's able to come down with it and uh, gives uh, uh, Miles a great manageable third down. Trying to get their second first down of the game, second in this series, putting Williams in motion. Give to Jackson, and this time, oh, he can't push his way and find a little hole. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, may have gained a half a yard to bring up a fourth down. Positive, but not positive enough in order to keep the drive alive. Yeah, again, on third down is very crucial. Both coaches emphasize third down. And I definitely believe third down is one of the, the, the phases of a football game when you're looking at it. How many points you score, a game, red zone, uh, opportunities that you convert into touchdowns, and third down. you got to keep the ball rolling on offense on third down. And defensively, uh, Albany State, they are doing what you want to do is stop them on third down. Christensen with the punt. And puts him back inside his 15 at about the 13. And regardless of where it is, Albany thinks they can drive the field under head coach Gabe Gardenia. He has been able to get a 7-0 lead. Can they add on to it right here on a spot? And now I help people find discounts like And you can see a shot of the campus of Miles College right here and the Albert Sloan Alumni Stadium. Reginald Ruffin has brought championship football to this campus in his seven years at the helm. And now he's just trying to stop the offense of Albany State as they trail 7-0. James Red along the top of the first quarter, 3.39 left to play, and only our second flag of the game, and it looks like it'll go against offense, those teams in the Pewter Helmet. Yeah, I look like those guys can get the snap off in time, huh? But I tell you what, Coach Ruffin, this is a guy, he basically uh, was uh, the Gulf South uh, freshman of the year. You know, he was a heck of a football player during his days at uh, North Alabama. Did you play against him? Played against him. And, uh, you know, we had our battle. So, as I told him, he helped put me in the NFL in North Alabama. So, you had to play somebody for him. There you go. And this time, the magic that happened on the first opening 97-yard touchdown drive has not happened. They've started with a... penalty, and now Austin Stevens with the tackle. He's already had about two or three on the day trying to lead that defense of Miles College to bring up a second and long. Yeah, you see Albany, they tried to come back with the same, it seemed like the same position where they were when they first scored. Come with that dive and see if they could uh, have they fixed the problem with Habersham. And on that particular play, looked like Miles had an answer for him. 
Miles playing seven freshmen on their defensive starting lineup. This time it is Haversham able to get about six of those yards back out to about the 16 yard line. And one thing about a great running back, you may have an opportunity to slow him down, contain him, but you can't stop him. And Habersham, uh, I'm pretty sure as the game gets going farther and farther, you may stop him, but he's going to get his yards. So just how, how far and how many yards will he get? Third and long. Option. Once again, finding a running back. This time, looks like it's Fraze. Kalen Fraze on the carry, but it is a flag. Yeah, again, you see they run it at option. You got to get somebody in the quarterback face, make him pitch it, but you also got to have someone to be able to contain it, turn it back into the pursuit. And that's a great uh, play by Miles. Harlan Johnson, our head referee, trying to make sure he gets the call right. And Takevian Harris called for the push in the back. Yeah, you see right here to get up in the quarterback face. Ah, right there, look like he got him in the back a little bit. But uh, again, what Miles is doing is what you have to do if you're going to stop this uh, option offense. You got to get somebody in the quarterback face right now, make him decide right now, pitch that ball. And now you have your contained guy, then you have your field guy, and it kind of makes it easier for the defense. But if they don't make the quarterback make a quick decision, then again, you're going to see big runs like you saw in, in all of these first uh, possession. So now third and forever. They need to get to the 25 to make sure they have enough for the first. And this time, getting some of those yards back is Habersham, but not nearly enough. Gets back out to about the 16-yard line, and that's where it should be a punting situation for the Golden Rams. Yeah, usually in situations like this, you see teams throw the ball. But I'm not sure that uh, Coach G, as they call him at Albany State, feels comfortable with the passing game. And uh, he, on that particular play in my mind, he just wants to make sure that the punter gets out of the end zone when he punts the ball, so at least they have an opportunity to push Miles' um, offense back. But if they had tried to pass the ball and if it was incomplete, now your punter is punting from the back of the end zone, which gives uh, Miles an opportunity to have good field position. So uh, I give Coach G a great, a great remarks on that particular play call. Gabriel Bellinas to punt. Breeze started to set in here at Alumni Stadium. And we will have a return, but not much of it. Brought down quickly by Albany State. They'll take over. Miles will take over at their own 35-yard line, make it the 36. Yeah, again, you never like to see the ball after a punt or definitely a kickoff hit the ground. Just uh, not good punt return adequacy, as they would say. Uh, even if you have to fair catch it, you fair catch it. And so far for Sidney Wilson, he is one of three for three yards, but it has been the ground game that has helped Miles College keep this game relatively close. They've gotten a couple of first downs on their last possession, but now they're in the best field position that they've had so far this game with a minute 31 left to play in the opening quarter. Yeah, with the tempo of the game in the first beginning, you thought it was about to be a blowout for about miles and settling down. Pump fake and almost intercepted, almost intercepted. Pass intended for Miles College, but it was number 29 for Albany. Cameron McDowell, who was able to get the deflection and break up. Yeah. Cameron McDowell, he was on the first earlier play. He grabbed the receiver. They kind of got behind him uh, the first series. But on this particular play here, he has another opportunity uh, to catch an interception. Looked like they seen something on film with him with the deep ball. Wilson getting some pressure, tries to find some room to run, breaks the line of scrimmage, and may have gained two yards on that play. Yeah, again, 
you want to try to put Miles, what Albany is playing such great defense. Uh, Miles is not able to uh, move the ball and convert. Really, first down is a crucial down uh, because that sets you up for second and third down. And now these guys are looking at a, a third and long, which is not their strength offensively. Third down. Nice pitch and catch. Gets to the outside. Room to run and more. Gets knocked out of bounds. Enough for the first down and more. The most explosive play of the first quarter for Miles College. Leanthony Robinson on the reception. The young man from Greensboro, Alabama, able to get an explosive play for the purple and gold. Yeah, you see what happens when the quarterback gets a good uh, a snap and he's able to throw the ball and receive his runs and picks up great yard for Miles. Justin Hardy, the first time we get to see their leading rusher so far this season, the young man from Homewood, Alabama. He is met by a lot of gray uniforms, and he goes quickly to the side. Yeah, this guy, Justin Hardy, he does everything for Miles. He not only leads the SIAC in attempts and yards, so this guy has to carry this offense on his shoulders. And you see him, he, he's a, a, a very electric guy. He, he's a smart player for this offense. So uh, Miles has to give him the ball and give him plenty of opportunities if they are to have an opportunity to win this game. And we end the first quarter with Albany State heading into Fairfield, Alabama, right outside of Birmingham, and able to burst through with an opening drive and a score. But it's Miles College who is on the drive trying to get on the scoreboard right here on a spot. Hello from the end zone of Alumni Stadium here on the campus of Miles College. That's, you know, before you get to those nice luxury boxes that you have in Mercedes-Benz Stadium, that's how it all starts, right there in the end zone with a tent and a nice riser. And I know they got some good cooking going on over there. Great cooking, family and friends. What else can you ask for? A nice night, a little bit of breeze, but hey, great night for football. Starting the second quarter as Miles College is on the drive as they trail by seven. Nice little cutback, but met by a host of pewter jerseys along with their gold writing in Albany State. It was Darrell Freeman on the carry, but it was met by a host led by Zavondrick Shingleton, the young man from Millen, Georgia, for Albany State. Yeah, when you when you are, uh, uh, we talk about nowhere to run on that particular play. When you get the defense pursuing, the running back has nowhere to run. And great uh, play by the uh, Albany State defense hustling. Third and ten. Pitch and catch, catch made, and they have a flag, may have been a hole. Another flag comes in late. And this may all be coming Number back. Number 11, Albany State must leave the game for one play. Hellman is off. And now they're going to try to discuss it. Lee Anthony Robinson, who has been the offensive spark with the biggest offensive play of the game for Miles College. Offense number five. Ten-yard penalty. Replay third down. Holding call against Jordan Walker for Miles College, which means they're going to push it back and replay the third down, and Coach Gardenia definitely wants to have that one back. Yeah, definitely. Um, anytime you see two flags on the ground, I, I'm used to seeing uh, multiple multiple flags on the field, but when you see them right beside one another, now you know that's a bad deal. But again, uh, Miles is putting themselves, um, you know, shooting themselves in the foot. And as we talked about penalties, penalties are drive stoppers. And this is what Coach Ruffin said during our conversation with him that he did not want and could not accept the fact that you stop yourself. And right here, I'm pretty sure he's definitely not pleased with Miles stopping himself. Wilson, with some time, finds a receiver in and out of the hands of Jordan Walker. That is the perfect, when you say you gotta catch the ball before you run, that is a perfect example. You gotta catch the ball, look it in, great throw, look it in, catch it, and then run. Uh, if you don't catch it, nothing else, 
snap. So catch it and then run. So I'm pretty sure the quarterback will come back to him, but right now they come to the sideline. He's going to probably talk to him, hey, if you want me to throw the ball to you, you got to catch it. <laughs> Field goal opportunity for Miles College. Nick Christensen has been perfect all year. And kick is up, and it is good. Yeah, special team is very important, even the kicker. So. And Miles College gets on the scoreboard with a 55-yard field goal that makes its way through the uprights to get them on the board in the second quarter. And 52-yard field goal by that young man right there, Nick Christensen, and he remains perfect at 11, uh, 5 for 5 on the season, and that was his longest field goal of the year. Interesting story about that young man. He had to have two surgeries to really get back to where he was in his all-conference uh, level his sophomore season. He had to get bone shaved. When you see him with a bone and shaving, that's sort of, ooh, eerie. Yeah, I don't even like to shave, period, the hair on my face, so you're talking about a bone. But hey, it's good to see him uh, have that kick, and I'm pretty sure it bolstered his uh, confidence. And he's going to kick this one deep into the end zone, and it will be Mike Green who will kneel it, and Albany will take the ball at their 25-yard line. So now if you're Coach Gardenia, what do you want to see from your offense? Again, I'm pretty sure he's probably telling his guys, okay, guys, let's get back. Let's get back into the game plan. Let's settle down. He's probably reminding them of the first series. Let's go back and let's play our style of football. Let's, yeah, let's uh, everybody get their block. Uh, quarterback, and like he says, it starts with the guy behind the center. So uh, the quarterback, let's take back control. Uh, offensive line, let's block. And running backs, let's find the open hole and let's hit the ball hit right up the seam and receivers when the ball is thrown to you let's make the catch and make big plays chancellor johnson still in at quarterback now inside run to habersham and he's able once again to get positive yards the interesting stat about mckinley habersham going into this game he had a little bit over 300 yards rushing but he never had a negative yard. He always falls forward. That's a great sign by a guy. Uh, either the offensive line is doing a heck of a job or this guy is doing a heck of a job uh, really understanding the, the, the offensive scheme. But I think it's a combination of both. Uh, these guys are blocking well for him, which gives him opportunity to lean forward. On the option. This time on the going to the outside. And we do have a flag on the carry. Rodell Shorter, the young wide receiver from Stockbridge, Georgia. Again, they had someone for the quarterback, but didn't have no one for the pitch man. So um, anytime you, you got to be able to have all three phases covered when it comes to stopping the offense. Hold it. Offense number 14. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Replay second down. To Kevin Harris, that is his second penalty of the game, and that pushes them back. Now, if you look at this formation, this offense that they run, really I think that football is played from basically three types of offenses. You have the old West Coast offense, uh, Bill Walsh, and uh, you have the run and shoot, and then you have the actual air Corey Coriel. So if you look at the way they set up sometimes, they had the two backs in the backfield. That's basically a, a gun extension of a two-back split uh, offense. Fumbles the handoff and able to get back to the original line of scrimmage, but not much more. And it's always tough whenever you as a running back you're just taught to put your arm up you when you're running from the left side of the uh, uh, quarterback you have your right arm up and somewhere or another in that particular uh, synchronization of quarterback faking it to or giving it to the running back a um, little bit of bobble action happened there and they almost lost it on that position that possession third and long Johnson with room to run, gets the first down and more. And yeah, he may not move fast, but when those long legs get to churning, 
he can eat up a lot of yards each step that he takes. Yeah, he's a big guy. Again, he's 6'5". A little bobble right there. He recognizes right now the play has broken down similarly, and he takes off and picks up positive yards for uh, Albany State, which gives them a first down, and they're almost at uh, midfield. So great uh, recognition by the quarterback to realize that, hey, his, his first option wasn't there. Now let's tuck it and let's run. Near the 45. And movement on the line, and we'll see who flinched first. Was it Cofield, the center, or would this go against Miles? Defense, number 97. Five-yard penalty, remains first down. Brad Horn, the nose guard for Miles. Looks like that cat and mouse game between nose guard and center. The center won that. You, you, you're right over the ball. There's no excuse for jumping off sides. I mean, you're right there over the ball. Keep your eyes on the ball and move. But sometimes the center, they play with the football. So eh, it could have been a little bit of that going on. First and five, Habersham using his strength to get another first down for the Golden Rams. He may not be a big guy, but he definitely packs a wall. Yeah, Coach Gardenia said that this guy, Habersham, he has D1, Division one running back type of ability. And right here, he shows it. He puts his shoulders down. It, the first man can't bring him down. He punishes the first man, kind of a la Walter Payton. Mm -hmm. You want to punish the first guy. And it, it's going to take more than one guy to bring Habersham down. And uh, he just showed that, uh, as we can see. Coach Gardenia is trying to see if they're going to call it a first down or are they going to try to uh, get a spot. And they're saying, no, he's a little short. And they're going to say it's second and inches. And this is typically where offensively you're over the midfield and it's second and short. You know third down is short. It's going to be kind of uh, easy. So sometimes they take a chance and throw a deep ball here, some type of big play. Quick give. Habersham has a lot of room to run inside the 30. The 20, he's trying to find an opening. Does inside the five and down at the one yard line. Touchdown saving tackle by Miles. Yeah, again on this play here, uh, it's already second and short. So your defense, you're kind of like in a, a, a two way go. You don't know if it's going to be a pass or it's going to be a run. So here, Albany runs the ball. Habersham comes right up the gut. Nobody's there. Picks up great yard. You see he's looking to see which way he wants to run, but he's trying to get into that end zone. But great run, great play call by the offense coordinator. Albany sitting down, looking to try to knock it at the door to score again. Now timeout is called. Kendall, Kendrell Walker made that touchdown saving tackle on the play. 10-14 left to play in the second quarter. Gabe Gardenia has really brought up to life, and you can see right there, he's talking to his guys, particularly Harris right there. He doesn't want to have another penalty. Uh, situations like this, you don't want to start uh, getting yourself, uh, shooting yourself in the foot, um, as the old cliche goes, where you're stopping yourself. And uh, Albany right now, the running game is beginning to pick back up. Uh, Miles has been struggling with that running game all this evening. Uh, now their back is against the wall uh, again. Miles, someone has to step up. Bond, uh, the guy we talked about earlier uh, in the telecast, uh, I'm pretty sure he's talking to his guys, uh, trying to get the morale up. The coaches are trying to get the guys energetic. Somewhere or another, Miles has to make a big stand right here. And I've seen it done before. I've been in particular situations myself uh, where it's been on the goal line first and, and goal, and uh, we've stopped them all four downs. Well, Coach Ruffin wants to see them stop them all four downs and try to keep this game close as they trail 7-3 with Chancellor Johnson and the Golden Rams knocking on the door to try to expand their lead. They have to have penetration by the deep line here if they want to try to stop anything that Auburn's trying to do. Give to Habersham and he stretches across. Touchdown, Golden Rams. McKinley Habersham with his first touchdown of the day, well over 100 yards rushing, and this little guy is packing a wallop for the Golden Rams from Auburn. Yeah, this is just a mono, a mono, man on oh man. Who offensive line, who defensive line is the best? Albany State wins that contest. Habersham gets it up in there for another score for Albany State. And you see a fan right there, legend. Yeah, if he keeps running like that, he will be a legend, and she's going to shout his name out. Shout his name out. 
<laughs> Bellini is for the point after attempt. And it is successful. Timeout on the field. McKinley Habersham. He's trying to make sure, yeah, I don't have any marks on me because I can run, 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 and keep on running. Rise and shine. And what an afternoon and evening it's been for that young man, number four, McKinley Habersham, over 100 yards rushing and his first touchdown of the day. As Albany State has a 14-3 lead over the homestanding Miles Golden Bears. James Red, along with Tyrone Poole, first of three games here on Aspire for the SIAC. Yeah, when you're having a great game, you saw uh, Habersham with his helmet uh, kind of halfway off his head and talking. When you're having a great game, you got a little sweat going, the helmet, and if your forehead holding your helmet on, and that's, that's an indication that you're doing well this time. Deion Atkinson on the return. Nice spin move, and he is wrapped up at about the 24-yard line. And next Saturday, it's the granddaddy of all college football matchups. Don't miss Tuskegee Morehouse Classic next Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern, right here on Aspire. Now, that game's played in Columbus, Georgia. Now, you may argue that's not the granddaddy of all the classics because they also have another classic outside of the Tuskegee Morehouse Classic that you played in? Yeah, they call it the Fountain City Classic. Uh, but hey, you have two schools, Tuskegee and Morehouse, that are well known. Uh, one has been known to dominate uh, the SIAC football, and Morehouse is on the rise. On the rise. So it's going to be a great game. Right now, Miles is trying to get on the rise. Freeman on the carry, able to get a couple of positive yards, but quickly wrapped up and he loses somebody loses a helmet and yes it is Freeman he'll have to leave for a play I know he's trying to say hey somebody ripped off my helmet I know somebody probably need to find someone to take Habersham helmet off so he'll miss a couple of plays away uh, he's running the ball but uh but yeah that's the rule whenever that helmet comes off you got to come up for you because you'll see him back on the field the very next go, go, go. Second down, and we're going to call it six. Nice pitch and catch, trying to find an opening. Jordan Walker on the reception, but there is a flag at the third. Never want to see that flag come out. Seems like Laundry is starting to follow Miles College offense. Every time they get a good positive play, it's all coming back. And sometimes when you try to rush things, you're trying to uh, get some sense of uh, continuity going. Um, this can disrupt the mental state that it takes to typically wouldn't do. Personal foul against Albany State. And it moves Miles into Albany territory. And I know Coach Gardenia is not happy about that. That's a self-inflicted wound that could pay dividends for Miles. Yeah, myself talking about Miles, Albany State, the same thing. You don't want to shoot yourself in the foot, and you don't want to give your opposition any type of uh, easy yard. So that's what they just did on that particular play. First down out to midfield. Wilson got some room to run, finds an opening, enough for a first down. Now the offense is starting to click after that Albany State personal foul where they thought they had Albany pushed back. Now they're into Albany State territory. Well, Miles this, driving. But this is good. This is anytime you can get the defense food. And right there, the defense went with the play action. Quarterback had enough room to pick up a first down. Jackson on the carry, trying to find some room to run and does. Gets enough for another first down. The Golden Bears are on the move. Darrell Freeman that's on the carry. Yeah, on the move is right. Hand the ball off, everybody getting a block, and sealing off, he misses, make a, a guy miss there. Uh, receivers are doing great job staying on their res, uh, particular respective uh, defensive backs, and Jackson hits a seam, gets a first down. Uh, Torian Bell, they, his nickname is Bell, 
And right now his bell is not ringing, but his legs are hurting. Yeah, sometimes when they're in that position there, a little bit of cramp action going on, but... Um, now, now, you played 14 years in the NFL. What is the secret to proper hydration before a game? Is it days before or the night before? It's always days before and the night before. So uh, the rule of thumb is when we're in practice, um, especially during training camp, now that's usually the hottest, uh, you would come in and you would weigh yourself. You weigh yourself, and then for every uh, pound, when you come back and get back on the scale that you have lost, you have to drink at least 20 ounces of fluids to uh, regain that. So if you've lost five pounds during that day, which is a lot, then that means you have to drink at least 100 ounces of water before the next practice. Oh, my goodness. Well, we're happy to see Mr. Bell is back on his feet. We'll see if uh, he can ring the bell and get back into playing. But right now it's first and 10. Miles is trying to ring the touchdown bell and get a score. It's kind of like an old song, Ring My Bell. Yes, sir. <laughs> ring a ling a ling. And this time they snuff it out real fast. The dirty blue defense. And nowhere going fast. Marquez Thomas, his nickname is Quez, but this time you can call him a ball hawk, able to find that ball quickly. Yeah, again, I definitely believe that first down, you have to limit your opposition and limit the offense as much as you can. And on that particular play, it looked like Miles was trying to come back to this particular play with the receiver. Uh, quick screen that they had run consecutively uh, before that, and this time, Albany State was ready for it. Nice handoff, trying to get some of those yards back from the sack. Gets a little bit more and more close to a first down is Darrell Freeman. Only stands five foot nine, but the little running back is showing big heart, able to get a first down and move the chains for Miles. Yeah, just as uh, Miles gave up yards, they come back and they get yards. So, again, give credit to the guys. They are really trying to work hard on these particular plays. Freeman once again on the carry, but this time no happening there. Albany's right there to wrap him up. He may have gained one, possibly two yards to get down to the 15-yard line. This is the closest that Miles has been to pay dirt all game long. Yeah, Miles is in the red zone, and the red zone is considered 20 yards and in. Some people call it the green zone if you're on offense because green means money. It's time to go to pay dirt now. And they're looking for money zone, and ball is tipped and almost intercepted by Nick Scott, but he drops it. Yeah, I think Nick Scott was actually uh, looking too much at the, the actual receiver and the uh, uh, defensive back and uh, had an easy interception here. Uh, you can't get no easier than this right here. This is uh, just, ah, he's looking at himself saying, ah, just a little bit more concentration. But hey, either way, it's incomplete for Miles coming up on a third down, which again is not very favorable for uh, Miles College and how they convert. They're really not a good team when it comes to converting uh, third down. Sidney Wilson in for Lejean Quadier, who was the scheduled starter, but Wilson got the start. And now it is Justin Hardy, and Justin Hardy, the leading rusher so far this season, four miles. Today, he's only been able to get one, possibly two yards. Every time he enters the game, they have been able to wrap him up. Again, give great credit to Albany State's defense. Again, Coach Gardena has said that they put emphasis on stopping teams when they get in uh, the red zone. Uh, and they do a great job here. Uh, Justin couldn't find nowhere to run. You see a lot of Albany State helmets there. Great job at the defense, forcing Miles to kick a field goal. Christensen with his second field goal of the evening, and now he remains perfect at six for six for the year. 32-yard field goal, and it is good. They're within one point of tying it up. They trail, check that, they're within a, a touchdown away. 14-6 is your score right here on a spot. And it was two years ago that Nick Christensen made all-conference first team as a kicker. And right now, he's on pace to do that again. Six for six so far this season with field goals and also perfect at point after attempts. He haven't had a chance to do that, but so far, with a 52-yard and 32-yard field goal, he has been the all the scoring for Miles College. James Verrett along with two-time Super Bowl champion Tyrone Poole, Fort Valley alum. Always a Wildcat. Uh, the Fort Valley State. The, the, the. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, you know, it's always good to to, 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 to get field goals, and you know, it's great to see, uh, the, you know, the kicker uh, back after having surgery. But as a head coach, when you get down in the red zone, you want touchdowns. And so far, touchdowns have yet to be had by Miles, but it has been all Albany State with two scores so far in the first half. And on this kickoff, they get out to about the 15, but not much more. Now, now this is unacceptable as a kickoff return unit. Um, you have to get the ball to the 20-yard line. It's a written rule. It's not in the rule books, but it's a written rule subconsciously and the coaches that you've got to get the ball to the 20-yard line. Worst case scenario, if we down the ball in the end zone, we get it to the 20. So you've got to return the ball to the 20-yard line. That's a must in every kickoff return. And right now, We've got Chancellor Johnson, who has so far pitched a gym. And yes, he is a pitcher on the Albany State baseball team. But so far, he has been the signal caller leading the way for the Golden Rams. It's kind of funny you say he's on the, the, the baseball team, but, you know, we're not really seeing a lot of passes uh, uh, well, with him using his arm. Well, uh, starting off the year, they were going to have Stephon Marsha, yes. a transfer from Liberty. He was scheduled to be the starting quarterback. He was a grad transfer from Liberty University. He had an injury that put him out for the whole Pecky. year. Mm -hmm. So then Chancellor Johnson basically thrust into the yes. situation. And he said, OK, coach, I got it. I got it. I know. Hey, somebody, it, it falls on somebody. So, you know, give him kudos for stepping in. You know, he's doing a great job uh, maintaining offense. Now on the keeper, long legs travel fast out to the 40-yard line. First down and more for the Golden Rams. Chancellor Johnson has pitched to Jim so far. Yeah, just like Coach Gardena said, he wants the quarterback to make great decisions. Great decisions right there, not to pitch it. He saw the opening, picks up a great uh, game for Albany State, gives them a first down, and already they're knocking at the door at the 50-yard line. Not bad for a quarterback known as a pocket passer. He has been able to adapt to this gun spread option very well under Coach Gardenia. Yeah, and again, emphasizing Coach Gardenia says it starts with the guy behind the center. Carry goes nowhere fast for Habersham, one of the few, even though he still got positive yards. Gained maybe one yard on the play, but that may have been his shortest gain so far. Yeah, all it did was just take his average from being uh, 15 plus yards <laughs> carried to about 13 <laughs> yards to carry now. <laughs> he may be a little upset about that one. <laughs> Second down and long. Option again. Shorter. On the carry, enough for a first down, but yes, there is a flag that is thrown. Rodell Shorter playing that wide receiver position on that end around part of the option. Yeah, if you look at it, basically, it, it's still similar to what they start out in their gun uh, spread offense. They have two backs in the backfield. Here, they give you another look. They bring the receiver across. He now forms the two backs in the backfield, and they end up being the same way. Let's see what the call Holding. is. Offense number 14. 10-yard penalty, replay second down. And once again to Kevian Harris, it seems as though pass blocking for him has been an issue. Yeah, anytime you find a guy, usually you're going to have those issues when you're going up against someone who outmatches you, someone who's a little bit more gifted than you, so you have to do a little bit extra, so to speak, to try to stop him, and it usually ends up being a penalty. So uh, we kind of keep our eyes on that and see if that continues to be a problem for Albany State. So all those positive yards come back now, second and ten. Habersham says, you know what, I can get half of them back. He gets about six. Always leaning forward, falling forward. Yeah, you know what's amazing to me is this guy weighs, uh, they have him listed at 180 pounds, but he's running the ball like he's weighing at least 210 out there tonight. So uh, he's playing big, as they say. It's not the size of the dog in the fight, but the fight in the size of the dog. Mm -hmm. And they would say the fight of the ram. The fight of the ram, exactly. <laughs> Third down, call it four. Come on, 
Going to keep it, gets close to the first down, maybe a yard short is Chancellor Johnson. Late flag is flown at midfield. The one thing I like is you got to punch that quarterback. Now, you know, in the National Football League, they don't let you touch the quarterback. Anymore. Yeah, that's the thing about college. I, I think that's why people like college football over pro. The pros, they kind of baby him a little bit. But college is every man for Us himself. Like Defense number four. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Kalen Bonds, one of the defensive leaders for Reginald Ruffin's Golden Bear team. And he's not happy because that is definitely a self-inflicted wound that hurts your team. Yes, very self-inflicted wound. And when you got an offense that you're having trouble stopping and you're giving them additional yards, you definitely, that's a self-inflicted wound. Emotionally and physically. Looking to throw, has a man wide open. Five, touchdown! To Kevian Harris, put six more on the board for the Golden Rams. Yeah, again, they run the ball, run the ball, and you knew that this was going to come. It was going to be a play action, and Miles bit up on him trying to stop the run, and receiver wide open. Johnson does a great job. Albany State's in end zone again, this time through the air. To Kevin Harris, that most likely makes up for some of those holding calls that he's had against him. He's like, hey, just throw me the ball. Exactly, and that particular play right there, great call, wide open. So he made up for it. And you can see his coaches is trying to tell him, hey, don't worry about that. Let's worry about you pass blocking. <laughs> and Coach Reginald Ruffin right now trying to calm down his special teams uh, to let them know, hey, we're still in this ball game. Yeah. And right now, he probably tell them, hey, everyone do your job. Calm down. Calm down. If calm down wasn't the third or fourth word out of his mouth, then it's going to be in this conversation. And that's what they have to do. Calm down. Take care of your responsibilities. And again, when a team is beating you in such a way as running the ball as Albany is doing, you're just waiting and setting yourself up for that play action. But uh, you just have to do your job and uh, stay and cover your area. Stay on your main. If you have a, if I'm a safety, if I see somebody running downfield, stay deep. If I'm a defensive back, stay on my guy. And right there again, uh, Miles struggling on defense, Albany makes him pay for it. Is that agonizing as a defensive back to say, we're getting gashed? But I still got to remember my main job is to stop somebody from beating us deep. Well, that's what happens when, you know, you start having bad plays. Everyone wants to try to do someone else's job. And when that happens, you mess up. And Bellinas in for the point after attempt. They try to have a different lineup and now go back to the traditional point after kick look. Almost. So blocking there. And let's take a look again at Takevian Harris's, and they're still trying to work on him not holding. But let's look at that touchdown pass. Again, great play action. Quarterback looking downfield. Miles again trying to stop the run. Everyone comes up. You see if they just turn and trying to get back to their pass defense. It drops. But Albany makes them pay for the mistake in the secondary because Miles. Uh, looking for the run. Albany's running the ball real good, and play action is wide open. And to Kevin Harris, one of the seniors on this ball club, interesting situation. They did not have a head coach until after spring football wrapped up. So a lot of guys really didn't know where they would lie under Gabe Gardenia's uh, era as it began, but happy to see to Kevin Harris able to see some positive outlook there as we're ready to kick off 21 to 6 is your score 310 left in the first half and it's all Albany State here on the campus of Miles College Atkinson and 
Brought down flag comes from way back, and we got some pushing and shoving on the near side at about the 40-yard line. But for our fans, make sure you stay tuned. What happens when HBCU graduates enter the real world? Find out in Aspire's original series, The Graduates ATL, coming up at halftime. The way that flag came in there looked like that last touchdown pass from Johnson. Oh, yeah. Been a somewhat busy evening for Harlan Johnson and his crew. And as you said, Coach Gardenia, he's come in his first year uh, taking over uh, from Coach Lane. There's no flag for face masks. And it looked like it was going to be a face mask. Touched it, but didn't pull it. Yeah, and uh, if that face mask had turned, I'm pretty sure they would have enforced uh, that face mask. So now with 3.03 left to play, let's see what Sidney Wilson and company can do to try to get on the board with a touchdown. Freeman on the carry. They've been able to get some positive yards from the running back position, but not enough to get in the end zone. Yeah, anytime you can make a running back stop his momentum, make him take extra steps, make him go sideline to sideline, uh, you're always going to end up not having a good, uh, far as uh, average on that first carry or first down or any type of running play. So uh, credit Albany State with great penetration to make the uh, running back stutter his steps. Second and long. Wilson getting some pressure on the backside. High pass incomplete. Intended for Trey Smith, who stands at 6'2. Yeah, again, the quarterback here dropping back, little uh, three step drop. He looks up, didn't really set himself. Ball sails a little bit high over the receiver, but you got to settle your feet and get that shoulder down and deliver a good crisp ball so the receiver has an opportunity to catch it. It was a catchable uh, ball, just had to, uh, a great play, but not a great catchable ball. Third and long, 2.16 left to play in the first half as Miles trails 21-6. Miles, not their strength. Uh, good pitch and catch to Trey Smith, but maybe a little shorter the first, depending on the spot. Well, again, that's what you want as a uh, defense. Let him catch the ball in front of you. Um, I do think Miles can throw the ball, and, and, and I do believe that the way the game is going 21-6, to six, that they have to do something, and they basically get the first down. Uh, so that's good to see them throw the ball. And this time tripped up in the backfield. The running back for Miles, does he doesn't go anywhere fast. Marquez Thomas in from that nose middle linebacker position, able to get in and get the tackle on Christian Mays. Second and long. Interception by Albany State. Big play by the Dirty Blue defense. And Emmanuel Brown, we've talked about him a lot in the first quarter. He makes a huge play here in the second quarter from the wheel linebacker position. Yeah, Emmanuel Brown here, he just sits and sneaks, reads the quarterback eyes, jumps in front of it. Quarterback did not even see him. Great hands. So who says defensive guys don't have good hands? Great catch by Emmanuel Brown here, and also a good return. Again, sets up Albany State for an opportunity to push the ball into the end zone and get a touchdown. And the way their offense is going and the way Habersham is running the ball, uh, I'm pretty sure they're thinking the same thing. So now, rather than seeing Miles in a two-minute offense, we're going to see Albany in a two-minute offense. And it looks like the clock may have run out on him. Five-yard penalty. First down. Now, 
Now, this is going to be crucial for Miles' defense. You cannot give Albany State another touchdown. You can't go into uh, halftime down 28 to 6. So, uh, the win for Albany, for Miles, is going to be to give up a field goal. A win for Albany is to go in and get a touchdown. They do not want to get a field goal in this particular uh, the way the ball, they received the ball. Keeping on the option, Chancellor Johnson down to the five yard line. They can still get a first down before getting to the goal line. And I am very impressed by the red shirt freshman. Not necessarily fleet of foot, but he's able to move his legs and get a lot of yards. Yeah, wide open play there. Nobody really had the quarterback. Uh, Johnson, easy read, tuck the ball and finishes with a good run, puts the uh, Golden Rams on the Miles College Golden Bears six-yard line, threatening again second and goal, uh, trying to get into the end zone for another touchdown. Now, if you're Albany State right now offensively, do you want to try to make that crucial decision, run it in or pass it in? Well, I think here you just want to just be smart with your play calling. Uh, you're in a position uh, where you're going to score. You have an opportunity to score. Offense is moving the ball really, really well. Um, Miles is having trouble uh, stopping their run. So you just want to make sure that no one gets a penalty. You don't want to uh, shoot yourself in the foot, as I always like to say it. Uh, you're in a great position. So whether you run or throw, it doesn't matter as long as you get the ball into the end zone. You want seven. Coach Ruffin hoping his defense can make a goal line stand here. Second and five, ball on the six. And gets closer to the goal line, but not close enough is Habersham. He may be a half a yard short, make it third down and one. He can get a first down without scoring they can get down to the one and have another set of downs less than a minute to go phrase and he gets to the line of scrimmage but nothing happening there a goal line stance is happening right now timeout is called timeout called by albany state and now it's time for Coach Gardenia to, as they say, earn his keep. Earn his keep. And I think, you know, even even as a coach myself, uh, you know, you do, at, with 21 to 6, you know, you're asking yourself, hey, uh, do you just go ahead and bring take your offense out there and, hey, let's, uh, I have confidence in you guys and, and, and uh, I want a touchdown. And I think if he does that, it tells the offense that I have, Coach Gardenia is telling them that I have a lot of, uh, confidence in you guys and it's going to go a long ways into the season um, of course if you just want to take the points and be conservative then you kick the three uh, from miles's standpoint uh, you know they're telling their guys hey if they come out here and they try to go for it they are basically uh, telling you they have no respect mm -hmm. so this is a respect uh, situation for miles if albany state offense comes back out here wanting to score a touchdown and look like that's what they're going to try to do. They come back with their full complement of offensive players. Coach Reginald Ruffin is looking for a goal line stance here with 40 seconds left, fourth and goal. This is gut check time if you're a defensive guy, especially on that defensive line. And he does not get into the end zone, but remember, he could get across the first down marker and get a first down, and he does get the first down without score. Yeah, great. Again, they had an option to either score or get a first down. And see right here, he barely gets in, but he gets the first down for Albany State, so it gives him a new set of uh, four downs. And Coach Reginald Ruffin seemed like he was a little bit confused he wanted to make timeout. sure. Miles College. That's the second charge timeout, the first half. So he knows timeout. now that, yes, they got a first down. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was thinking it was fourth down. or, uh, But either way, Albany State, they have four new downs 
with 26 seconds left on the clock and the way again Habersham and you got Johnson you know 6-5 and uh, Albany State has a very uh, huge offensive line so uh, these guys I wouldn't be surprised if they come with a straight uh, dive play up the middle and if you're Reginald Ruffin and your defense you give them kudos for keeping them out of the end zone but hey guys now you got to do it at least four more times. Yeah, and again, defense, the longer you stay on the field, the weaker you get. It's not unlike an offense. The longer you stay on the field, the offense gets stronger. The longer the defense stays on the field, the weaker the defense gets. Ball on the one-yard line. Give to Habersham, and he dives into the end zone for the score. And the Golden Rams are on the board one more time before we get through with the first half. Yeah, you see here, Habersham, he goes up and over. And typically on defensive line, the reason why he does that, uh, the defensive line, they're taught, to, they're taught to penetrate and get your hands and your, your, your helmet and your shoulder pads down and try to penetrate. And uh, the only way into the end zone there was up and over. Habersham goes in again for another score. Once again, with the alternate look for the point after attempt, they're going to try to run. Bellinas on the option play, and he gets knocked out of bounds. You always got to be prepared for that, and Bellinas was right there, and they're just going to knock the ball out of his hands. Just let him know. Kickers don't score touchdowns or point or two-point conversions yeah, no, in my house. Kickers don't score, and kickers should score. But again, uh, Albany State uh, try to come with a little razzle-dazzle here. You know they were setting them up for this particular play. But again, great uh, pursuit by Miles. Gets over, punishes the uh, kicker, and I'm pretty sure he's going back. You see a little bit of the talking going on uh, right there, but I'm pretty sure that kicker uh, is going to remember that hit. You see McKinley Hambersham, well over 100 yards rushing, now with two scores on the evening, and he is a happy camper right now. A very happy camper. He's having a great game. So if we were playing fantasy uh, football in college, uh, he would have a lot of points. <laughs> Whoever put him on their fantasy football league uh, team, they would have a lot of points. He's having a great game tonight. Bellinas. Miles will take it at their own five-yard line, trying to get some type of offensive spark before the first half is over. But nothing happening there for Darion Atkinson. Again, that's not good. You catch the ball uh, just outside the 10, and you can't get 10 yards to get it back to the 20. That means Albany State is doing a heck of a job covering the kickoff. It looks like we have a penalty at the 23. Personal foul, 13 kicking team. Personal foul, number six in the receiving team. Those fouls all set, first down. So I want to know, when the penalty is all set, does your coach get upset at you? <laughs> really, if it's offset, then his mind goes back to the play that actually just happened. So, again, if I'm Miles, hey, I'm upset as a, uh, being a special team coach. We can't even get the ball to the 20-yard line uh, from where uh, it was received at. Darrell Freeman with the carry, and that should be the last play of the first half. Yeah, these guys have to go back in at halftime and... Uh, do a little bit of X's and O's drawing up and come back out in the second half and try to make better. And Coach Gardenia, he had the electrifying win against Tuskegee to start his journey in the SIAC. But so far in the first half of this matchup, he has a 27 to 6 lead and we do have a player down. Never like to see these guys, uh, anyone man on this carpet. So far, we've seen guys get up and walk off, so hopefully we'll see the same thing here. And it is good. He's taken off his helmet, and we do have some movement for Aaron Davis. Halftime here in 
Fairfield, Alabama on the campus of Miles College. It's Albany State with a 27-6 lead. And we'll have more halftime entertainment, but it's been field goals for Miles and touchdowns for Albany on the ground and in the air right here on Aspire. Everybody's story is different and affects people. Halftime here at Miles College as they trail Albany State 27 to 6. Meet the graduates from ATL. Ashley, Berto, Jion, Jared, Mimi, and Naya are all from HBCU. They're grads and ready to take on career, love, and life in Atlanta. Presenting the graduates ATL right here on Aspire. Welcome back to Aspire Television's presentation of the SIAC 27 to 6 in favor of the Golden Rams from Albany State. I'm James Red, and I am, and it's halftime right here. 27 to 6 is your score. Albany State with the lead over the homestanding Miles College right here on Aspire. Thank you. Your score. We'll get ready for a second half action right here on the campus of Miles College on Aspire. And as you see the marching band from Miles College, they're trying to put on the right stuff to try to motivate their team to come back from a 27 to 6 deficit right here on the campus of Miles College. James Red along with Tyrone Poole. And it's not how you start, it's how you finish. But to start, Albany State was really on fire. Yeah, like you said, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. But if Miles is to get back into this game, they may have to abandon the run and throw the ball. And for Albany State, stay with the run. And starting off the run, it was all Albany State and McKinley Habersham. Yeah, great run here by Habersham. Up the middle on the dive plate, picks up a good uh, yards for Albany State. Comes back here again. Johnson makes it easy for him to get into the end zone. And Habersham again, he's having a great day tonight. Nice long touchdown pass to Takevian Harris. And once again, Habersham finds his way into the end zone for an easy score. And it's been all Albany State as we take a look at the statistics. You see the overall rushing yards, 245 and 139 of them from McKinley Habersham. Yeah, the big stat that stands out right away is the rushing yards, 245 to 88. And that, again, that's why the score is 27 to 6. And an interception able by the defense of Albany State and penalties. You see not a lot by Miles, a little bit more by Albany, but they've able to overcome those penalties and able to turn negatives into positives and get 27 points on the board. Yeah, the passing yards, the 54 is going to change for Miles, I believe, in this second half. And you see Gabe Gardenia in his first season at the helm at Albany State, and right now he's looking to remain undefeated facing conference foes and for Reginald Ruffin you can see the chagrin on his face he is trying to get his team back into this ball game as they trail 27 to 6. Christensen with the kickoff and he's going to kick it out of the back of the end zone and as usual it will be a kneel down from the opposing team Mike Green with the kneel Nick Christensen one of the best in the SIAC as far as kicking the ball and forcing touchbacks. Yes he is and that's one thing that uh, coach Gardenia uh, told us about was the fact that uh, they don't really give the kick return uh, team an opportunity to return the ball. Talk about Miles kickoff for coverage because of the great kicking. And Chancellor Johnson has done a good job of managing this team. He is 59 yards, 52 yards rushing and passing the ball. He is one for one, 36 yards. Not yeah. bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. And here, we're probably going to see Miles stick with what they've been uh, working for them in the first half. Inside run by McKinley Habersham. And Habersham has not had a negative yard rushing for the entire season so far. Now he's over 140 yards rushing and no negative yards. Yeah, when you say falling forward, that's what you mean. This guy's not getting negative yards. He's getting positive yards. Uh, even if it's a one-yard gain, it's positive. Now, Miles' defense, they're going to have to go three and out in this series. Again, the defense is going to have to be very important on this series here to get offense opportunity to get back into the game. Pass complete. 
to Fraze. And Fraze is able to get positive yards enough for a first down for Albany State. Kalen Fraze out of the backfield. Yeah, the swing play, that's a great call. Everyone, Everybody's covered. Uh, the running back, a little swing pass to him. He's able to pick up positive yards. First down out to the 39-yard line for the Golden Rams as they have a 27-6 lead. Now, even though Albany State has converted on that third, uh, got the first down, Miles still has an opportunity to get off the field. Habersham gets to the line of scrimmage, may have gained one. Yeah, one yard. That's always a positive. Anytime you can uh, not give the offense a big yardage on first down. Um, Again, I keep emphasizing first down play. First down play and third down play are very crucial this day and age in football. And uh, Miles sets himself up by having uh, stopping Albany State, uh, set himself up for a great second down play here. I don't know if that signal was a home run pass, but we'll wait and see second and long for Albany State. Inside give to Habersham. And, you know, if this was baseball, we'll say, you know, he got a double. Yeah, he got a double. And again, they come back with the same play to dive. Um, and Miles is having trouble with that dive. And Habersham, that's why he's having over 40, uh, 140 plus yards tonight, because it's very key that the offensive line, they get to their blocks, whether it's zone blocking or whether it's man to man blocking. But either way, Habersham, the dive has been very effective for Albany State thus far tonight. Third and three. Fumble on the play. Ball is loose, picked up by Fraze, and this will take a loss for Kalen Fraze. And it looks like Johnson did not know exactly where he wanted to pitch it because he pitched it in between two guys. Yeah, this is when you ask the court, what were you doing? What were you looking at? Like he he thought maybe Habersham or uh, the, the first guy was the guy he was supposed to pitch it to. But you also got, as a quarterback, when you're running the option, you have to see the guy then pitch the ball. Looked like there he was just... Uh, throwing it hoping that the guy would be there. Uh, but unfortunately, it, it, it didn't turn into a bad play. They were able to recover. Would have been good for Miles. So they do get them the punt. Bellinas with the punt. Nice spiral, and it will take a Albany State bounce inside the 10, and they will down it at the six-yard line. And that's where the Golden Bears will take over. So they have flipped the field. That's the one positive you can take away from that drive for Albany State. But now for Miles, they need to come out with their hair on fire, so to speak. Yeah, they do. They do. And, and it doesn't help, again, when you let the ball hit the ground. They lost about 10 yards just with the ball hitting the ground and rolling. And again, Miles... They're going to have to probably change their game plan and, and probably put a little bit more passing uh, into their play calling uh, this second half if they are to get back into this game being down 27 to 6. We're still going to stay on the ground. And this time they go with. Christian Mays, the junior running back, stands at 5'7". Only had 16 carries so far this season, about his third carry of the evening. Nick Scott on the tackle for Albany State. Now they've worked their way a little bit out of that hole, brings up a second and short. Quarterback Keith for Wilson, and he's able to get out beyond the 16-yard line, enough for the first down, and move the chains. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure everyone's asking, uh, just like myself, again, I understand that you want to run the ball, uh, but the run is also going to eat up the clock. So, uh, and also, where's Harley? I'm looking for him. I haven't heard too much about him tonight. He's only carried the ball one time, but mostly uh, we've seen Christian Mays, along with Ja'Kerry Jackson and Darrell Freeman. And Hardy, again, he's the guy that, when you look at the past games, he's been the heartbeat of this offense. So uh, without him, you got to ask yourself, are they kind of walking wounded a little bit? They're kind of half firing, which six points on the board is a great indication that they're not firing uh, to their full capabilities uh, without their main guy, Hardy. Second and seven. Oh. 
fumble on the play. Wilson will pick up his own loose ball and able to get, get back to the line of scrimmage. May have gained one on the, on the play. Yeah, you hate to see this. You hate to see the ball on the turf. But again, uh, the quarterback has the option to give it to the running back. He keeps it or he pulls it out. And on that particular play, the like both of them are trying to hold on to the ball. The ball hits the turf is what you do not want to see as a coach. Could have been uh, Albany's ball and it would have been very bad for Miles College at that point. Third and six. Wilson getting some pressure. He's going to tuck it and run. Flag is thrown. This may be all coming back. One thing you can say with these guys, when you put the pressure on them, they will run. Nafi Toure at the left tackle position. Uh, make that right tackle position. Number 72. Yeah, behind the line, behind and he the line. is a giant at about six foot six, three hundred plus. Hey, yeah, that's a guy. If he ever gets his hands on you, you're not going nowhere. So, <laughs> and so. he is from Mali, so this is a new sport to him. Ah, ah, well, it, but that kudos for his ability, uh, you know, to be able to play a game that he's not familiar with. Talks a lot about, says a lot about his athletic ability. Wilson on the keeper, but this time, once again, wrapped up real fast. Zavondrick Shingleton, nicknamed Quan, able to get the tackle for a loss. Yeah, great penetration here. Gets in the quarterback already. He goes to roll out to his left, but great penetration. Uh, forces a, a, a bad play and great play for Mal uh, Albany State defense, which they're punting out of the end zone. Christensen. Trying to get a positive bounce. And it'll be down at the 49-yard line. But remember, it touched someone's leg, so they're going to get some more yards down at the 40. And Coach Gardenia is trying to add on to that 27-6 lead. SIAC football right here on the spot. And you're taking a look at the head coach for Albany State, Gabe Gardenia. And you can tell that he is not necessarily thinking that this 27-6 lead is all but a done deal. Yeah, he got a shirt, shirt and tie with a long sleeve rolled up tonight. Flag on the play. First offensive five five man in the backfield. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Replay first down. Uh, too many men in the backfield. Somebody didn't line up right. Yeah, you always want to know what your responsibilities are on every position and every possession and every play call. So um, sometimes one guy thinking, hey, I thought you were supposed to be on the line. No, you're supposed to be on the line. So now we got too many people in the backfield. First and 15. Johnson. Looking to throw, and his first incomplete pass of the evening. Yeah, again, great, uh, great throw. Uh, at least gave the receiver an opportunity. Um, good mechanics, he rolls. It's, it's kind of tough rolling to your, uh, well, at least he rolled to his throwing side. Uh, great throw um, to even get the ball there. Second down and long. We saw this offense on the first drive go 97 yards for an opening score. And right now they're going to give it to Fraze, and Fraze able to get some positive yards, enough for a first down. Those inside runs have been very productive for Albany State. Yeah, again, the dive right up the middle, right off the, the center. Somewhere or another, Miles has to do something. Get Whoever has to dive, that person has to be able to make that play. That is the only play that has been hurting Miles this game is the dive, dive play. So uh, if it hasn't been Habersham, it's been some other running back having success with that dive play. Down to the 31. Give to Habersham. He finds another hole right there in the center, and he's going to outrun all the defenders into the end zone. Touchdown, Albany State. Touchdown, McKinley Habersham. Now, again, uh, 
Habersham, you know, give him credit, give the offensive coordinator, uh, calling it right up the gut. Now, what I don't like, you're going to see number 13. Now, at some point right here, take a dive. Don't, don't stop. Just hit his feet. Do something. But this is uh, on defense, uh, morale. Uh, you can't let your ego or your uh, energy or your morale of the defense get down. And on that particular play, if I'm gauging Miles' defense off of that one particular player, it tells me that their defense is not playing with a lot of energy right now. Well, McKinley Habersham approaching 200 yards. Molina's with the point after attempt. And the route is on. PAT is good. 34 to 6 is your score. Timeout on the field. McKinley Habersham seems as though he has found every hole possible in the center of Miles' defense to find his way in the pay dirt. And for number four, McKinley Habersham, he knows the camera is on him and he has shined like a shining star across the Magic City skyline. 34 to 6. He has well over 150 yards rushing. And you see his stats 178. He's averaging almost nine yards a carry and a whopping three touchdowns. Yeah, he came into the game uh, with an average of over five yards. So uh, he's going to bolster his average again after tonight's performance. But uh, uh, hey, he's their go to guy, and he's showing why he's averaging five plus yards fresh. Now Miles is trying to work out of a huge hole. Green on the return. Trying to find some room to run out to the 20. And he gets out to about the 24 yard line. He got it over the corner this time. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. So maybe that's a great sign on this particular uh, drive here for Miles College. So now if you're Miles offensively, is it abandon the run and we got to sling it around? We got to throw. Yeah, well, you got to throw the ball, but I don't think you totally abandon the run. Uh, I think you mix in some screens, some draws, uh, but they're, they will have to throw the ball to get back into this game. Uh, which is not one of their strengths. So uh, that's the thing about teams that love to run the ball. If you don't practice on, on the pass, then when you get in a situation where you got to pass the ball, then it's tough for you because it's uncharted territory. Trying to go with the option. Wilson finds some room to run and Moore out to the 40 and knocked out of bounds at about the 46-yard line, and that's the way to try to jumpstart this offense that has basically been pedestrian at best. Sidney Wilson with the long run for the first. Yeah, if I'm the college's college, defense. If I'm the players, you got to tell everybody, yeah, we got a 34-6 to six lead, but, hey, we can't relax. And I believe, I believe relaxation enabled Miles to get that big run there. Once again on the keeper, and this time not going very far at all. Wrapped up for a loss. Albany State's defense really woke up. Marquez Thomas right there leading the way for the Golden Rams. Yeah, there you go. You want this, this is what you want to see. You want to see one. One, two, three. You want to see guys coming in and, and getting on the ball. You see a lot of Golden Rams helmets right there around that ball. That's what you want. So uh, Albany State has to continue to play with energy just as though this game is zero to zero. Do not let up. Trying to get a run going nowhere fast. You can see great, great play by the defense here. Everyone has their uh, duties taken care of. You have the contained guy, the running back trying to get outside. He sees a golden ram helmet out there. He can't get outside. He tries to turn it up. You got a field guy. And then you got a guy who's in pursuit. So that's how you stop the run with great uh, technique on defense. That's exactly what you saw there by Rams, the golden ram defense. Third down and long. They're going to go with the four wide receiver set with Mays in the backfield. Timeout call by Wilson. He did not like what he saw, and he didn't want to have that delay a game call. Now, right now, offensively, this is a crucial moment. You're down 34 to six. It's five minutes left in the third, and you really can't get your playoff. You got to call a timeout. So, what is Ruffin trying to tell his team? Well, I'm telling the guys right now, 
we have to get some type of score going in, in uh, before this third quarter finishes. Um, so expect them to try to pass the ball. Uh, definitely on this next play, as you saw, they were setting up for the pass. Um, but they have to come out of the third quarter with a score. Uh, and then from there, you know, we've seen teams do it from every level. They this they can't get back into the game, you know, a la last year's Super Bowl. You know, we saw the Patriots. They were down uh, a bunch of scores, but uh, they kept their mind in the game and started making plays and got the momentum. And next thing you know, they end up winning the game. So it's not totally over for Miles, but they do have to start playing uh, better ball uh, control offense here. And from executive producer G. Gavin and Isa Ray is the hottest cooking show on television. Butter and Brown returns for an all-new season starting October 3rd at 8 p.m. Long pass incomplete on third down. Yeah, you, you, you want to you throw the ball, but you also want to make sure that you get a first down opportunity as well. So, uh, yes, you want to throw the ball, but also look to see if there's another guy open. And I know that Wilson is saying that Marquez Thomas may have uh, slapped me around a little bit too hard there. Punt by Christensen, and this will take a bounce. Oh, into the end zone for touchback. Good punt, but went a little bit too far. Yeah, a little too much uh, mustard on it, huh? <laughs> a little bit too much mustard on it. Yeah. But um, again, you saw it on that on, on that play, uh, the uh, punter, the punt returner, let the ball roll. Now, now, mind you, the the punt returner, now he can be hit himself. Uh, and you, you know, they just saw, if you were able to see it, uh, the uh, Albany State coverage guy actually took a shot at the punt returner. So, uh, even though you're the punt returner, you got to look out for yourself now. <laughs> So, so when you were in the league, if somebody tried to hit you when you let the ball go, I'm getting out the way. I'm if I, if I knew I was not going to catch the ball, I'm not going to stand there. I'm getting out the way. So, uh, just like when you make a tackle. All right, we're taking a look at Chancellor Johnson's number two for three, 48 yards, one touchdown, the longest, the 36-yard touchdown pass to to Kavian Harris. Now, some people would say, "Oh, that's not a lot," but remember, they run the gun spread option, so running the football is their bread and butter. And this 6'5 quarterback does a good job not only of running the option, but managing this offense to make it very productive. And managing it as a freshman, so he's doing a very good job. He's a red shirt freshman, he's doing a great job. Another run this time goes to Kalen Fraze, a young man from Ellenwood, Georgia. Yeah, again, uh, myself being a defensive guy, uh, right now, if I'm the leader of this defense for miles, I'm telling these guys, hey, I don't care what that score is on that scoreboard, we are going to play like we are Miles College Golden Bears. So uh, right now, I don't see that effort out of the defense. Johnson. And pitch and catch, positive yards, reception made. And it's tough. It is tough. Uh, defensively, um, you know, you're in a rivalry game like Albany and Miles. You know, these guys have faced each other in the championships. Uh, a couple of years ago, I did the game um, uh, right here in Alabama. Uh, but when you're down like this, uh, it, it kind of takes something out of you. So the defense has to rise up. Inside run, able to get one, possibly two yards. And that was once again Habersham, and he is approaching that 200-yard point. And what a night this will be for him if he can top that 200-yard mark. Yeah, it's almost like uh, back in the day, uh, a 1,000-yard runner uh, was uh, the top of the class when you, you know, would get 1,000 yards in a season. And uh, now that's become easy to do. And uh, as a running back, 200s. 200 yards uh, in a particular game, individual game, is the key now. Not just looking for 100 yards, 200 yards. One, 200 yards. Right now, pitch and catch for Albany State is not moving them forward. That was intended for Takevian Harris. 
Brings up a third, call it nine. And if I'm Albany State offense, offense coordinator, I'm telling the guys, take your time. Milk the clock, milk the clock. So don't try to rush it. Johnson breaks the line of scrimmage, and he's going to run, get close to a first down, maybe about two yards short. Gets down at the 40-yard line. Yeah, see Johnson drop back here looking to his left. No one there. He even took a peek to his right. No one there. Tuck it, run, and try to get the first down. Unable to get the first down. Now Albany State is punting the ball away to Miles College. And Johnson a little frustrated because he wants to see that work. And you see Coach Gardenia, he's automatically, look, going over there and talking to him. Yeah, just calm him down. Hey, you know, you're okay. Uh, just, you know, if it's not there, Take it and tuck it and run. We'll take that versus trying to throw it and get an INT, an interception, and giving Miles an opportunity to score in great field position. And this one will take a Miles bounce and is down at about the 33, 34 yard line. Good field position for Miles. Can they capitalize as they trail 34 to 6 with 2.15 left to play? Miles has not done anything offensively yet, but we still have a lot of football to play. You're watching SIAC football on Inspire. TV is and welcome back to Aspire Television's presentation of the SIAC. James Verrett along with Tyrone Poole. 34 to 6 is your score in favor of the visiting Albany State Golden Rams. It's Miles College turn here in the waning moments of the third quarter to try to get on the board with a touchdown. Yet to do that so far this evening. Sidney Wilson getting some pressure from the Dirty Blue defense and he's going to elude one tackler but brought down but not before he was able to get about eight yards on the carry. Yeah, actually, if he had been looking downfield, he had a wide receiver wide open. Uh, may not be able to see it right here, but uh, receiver was running wide open. But again, hey, you pull it down. If you don't see anybody, get as many, many positive yards as you can, and that's exactly what he did on that particular play. Second and short, Wilson on the keep, has room to run, gets beyond midfield. And gets down inside the 40-yard line. Another first down for Miles College. Looks like Albany playing a little bit conservative defensively. Yeah, they are, and they have a good reason to. No reason to try to uh, threaten and, and try to put pressure. Just sit back and play good defense. But again, when you're not used to passing the ball, as you see right here with Miles, the quarterback is going to look to run the ball instead of looking downfield to probably try to throw the ball, then run. First down give to Christian Mays. Mays gets inside the 35-yard line, down close to the 30. Brings up a second and short. Yeah, again, I still believe that Miles has to score in this third period, if third quarter, if they are to even have a remote chance to win in this game. Give again to Mays. He breaks the line of scrimmage, gets enough for the first down, and moves the chains, gets close to the 25-yard line of Albany State. Yeah, again, here, they're just going to pound it, try to get it up in uh, the middle, try to offset the pass a little bit. Mays, again, this time knocked sideways, but not before he gains about two. Yeah, again, I think, you know, I haven't seen Miles do too, too much of uh, screen plays, and they're not a real big screen team, but um, this is a great opportunity to run some screens. Wilson trying to find a receiver does. Vincent Davis, but incomplete. The H-back senior from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and it was in his hands and just fell out. Looks like that momentum caused him to drop the ball because his body was all over the place. Yeah, ground contact. Sometimes uh, when you hit the ground, you had the ball. He had looked like he had possession. Uh, body hits the ground, and just the reaction of the body hitting the ground, uh, hit a particular arm in a particular way, uh, makes the ball come out. 
third down. Wilson looking, going for it all. Incomplete in, out of bounds. Reception made by Lenore Tyree, but it was out of bounds. Yeah, again, to see the defensive back has no awareness of the ball. Mm. Uh, the receiver, basically, that's the point if you're a smart receiver. Uh, even if you, even if he comes back into the defensive back, that's an automatic pass interference call right there. That, that looked like that was a good reception. I don't know. It looked like he had one foot in. To me, yeah. The thing about the thing about college football, unlike the pros, um, you know, you will get that instant replay. Uh, college football, sometimes you have that hit or miss, but it did look like he had possession. Nick Christensen with the field goal, and he remains perfect on the season, seven for seven this year. And Nick Christensen has been all of the offense for Miles College. His third field goal of the evening. And they still trail 34 to 9 with six seconds left in the third quarter. Yeah, again, you know, great job by uh, Nick for uh, kicking the field goals and, 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 and putting points on the board for Miles College. But uh, as a coach, I'm pretty sure uh, Coach Ruffin and his staff, uh, you know, would rather have the six points. And Coach Gardenia is trying to talk to the referee to see exactly what was going on. I don't think he was happy uh, with something that was going on on the field. He was trying to let the official know something. Anytime you had them head coaches uh, going out to talk to the coach and uh, talk to the referee, uh, I'm pretty sure his coaches uh, have told him something on the headset, and he's trying to go out and uh, trying to rectify it. But uh, um, the referee said, hey, we control this field, so you go back to the sideline and call your plays. 40-yard field goal for Nick Christensen. And now, once again, he gets another opportunity to kick off and try to get another ball into the end zone. Albany's going to take it two yards in, try to find some space, and he does get it out to about the 24-yard line, maybe a yard shorter to that marquee moment of the 25. Mike Green on the return. And so far, it's been McKinley Habersham, who's been able to get close to 200 yards rushing in a route so far, 34 to 9, right here on the spot. And if this was a football game, you'd say Chancellor Johnson was pitching a shutout. Right now, it's a technical shutout. No touchdowns <laughs> given up by his defense, but offensively, he has been managing this game well. His coach told him to act more like Chris Paul than a quarterback, and right now, he is brought down by Kelly and Bond. But he has done a masterful job so far as far as managing this offense, which is primarily an option. I tell you what, he's done a great job. And also those nine points are going to look good for Albany State's average as far as the defense scoring points per game. Looks like we have a flag on the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 81 of the offense, 15-yard penalty, second down. Chris Hunt for Albany State called on that unsportsmanlike. Yeah, sometimes, you know, the defense, they're kind of frustrated, and the defense is kind of frustrated, so, um, you know, I'm pretty sure that wasn't quite all <laughs> Albany State, so the defense gets kind of frustrated looking at the scoreboard, so, uh, you know, they're talking junk, but as an offensive guy, you're telling them, hey, talk all you want, but look at the scoreboard, so right. that even adds a little bit more fuel to the fire on the field. But what do your parents say? You the one got caught. You the one got caught. <laughs> All right, another long run here by this time, Kaelin Kalen Fraze. Fraze able to get some positive yards for Albany State. And they have just basically run it down the throat of the Golden Bears. Inside, outside, you name it, they have been able to have their way rushing the football this evening. Yeah, then even snuck in a, a, a fake uh, uh, handoff and hit them with that long pass. So uh, basically, I think Albany State has done what they pretty much game plan wise came into this game to do. 
Trying for a pitch and catch and incomplete. Pass intended for Mike Green. Yeah, I think he kind of saw some, uh, what they say, little alligator arms there. Saw safety. Uh, uh, he kind of threw that ball right in between uh, a couple of defenders there and uh, had a little bit of steam on it. Uh, uh, so either had too much steam on it or the receiver just saw too many purple uh, jerseys around him. Well, I think, you know, you 6'5 quarterback, you got long arms, you really want to stretch it out. Yeah, and and he doing. hadn't had a long, a lot of time to stretch. Look, he's talking to a lot. I would have caught it. Look, he's hugging him. Please <laughs> catch the ball. Making me look bad. <laughs> the few times that I do have the opportunity to throw the ball. That's right. Bellini is with the punt. Ball's away, ball's away. And he's going to let it take a bounce. And it's going to be down at the 25 with 13.48 left to play in this game. 34-9 is your score. And it's been all pewter and goal. It has been Albany State with the lead. You're watching SIAC football right here on Aspire. is most dependable. From the executive producers, G. Garvin and Ice Array is the hottest cooking show on television. Butter and Brown hmm, returns for an all new season with hosts Seth and Leslie and many surprise special guests. See what's cooking on Butter and Brown this Tuesday, October 3rd at 8 p.m. right here on Aspire. Now, are you a cook, Tyrone? I tell you what, I'm not a cook, but watching this game here, uh, Albany State, they don't put some blood and brown on uh, Miles College, so <laughs> serve them up, you know. They flambe, <laughs> they may, flambe, yeah. Huh? They may be done already. <laughs> but no, but no, I, I, I can cook breakfast. You cook, what, no, now, That's what, easy. now what is cooking, now see, I've heard somebody say that, and you know what they did, they put a bowl and some, some uh, frosted flakes and said, there it is. <laughs> I can scrap with some eggs now and make toast. Okay. So okay. blood and brown. But, oh, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have another flag on the play. Snap infraction. Offense, number 75. Five-yard penalty. First down. Snap infraction. And I know Coach Ruffin is like, you know what, we're not going to watch this tape at the end when we're supposed to. Oh, man, but you know the great thing they say, uh, a lot of people who've been successful, they say they learn a lot from their failure. So uh, this is a must game that you have to watch, you know, because it's going to be a lot of things you can pick out that uh, you can help make the team better. Keeper for Sidney Wilson, and he finds a hole, able to get some of those yards back from the penalty and get back to the original line of scrimmage, which is the 25. Now, again, you know, if I'm a Miles College fan, alumni, you know, I want to see the team right now throw the ball. I don't care if we don't get back in the game. I want to see the team throw the ball, at least so, show some type of hard effort that, uh, you know, we are trying to win this game. Wilson. Jumps over a defender, able to get four, possibly five yards on the keeper. Well, again, Hey, if you're not going to throw it, then we're going to continue to run it. And if you are going to run it, well, let's get some positive yards. See, he shows a little bit of athletic ability there. Goes up and over. Uh, picks up five. Makes it a manageable uh, third and short uh, possession here for Miles College. Once again, Wilson's going to keep. Options it out to Mays. And Mays able to get some positive yards, but not enough for the first. Yeah, what's that? Uh, Jari uh, Shade, uh, 13 for the corner. Albany State comes up and make a great shoestring tackle here. Uh, he's the last line of defense. He's that guy. He's the contain guy. And his job is to tackle the pitch, and that's what he did. So that was a great job uh, by Shade on that particular play there. Punting situation for Christensen. And he kicks a real nice one, and it will take a Miles College bounce go inside the 10. Oh, he should have let it go. Should have let it go. He could have went a little bit closer, but down inside the 10 at the 9. Uh, I tell you what, 
again, like I said, I used to return punts. I'm going down there right now as a coach. I'm, I'm coming out of the booth. I'm going down there and talk to those punt returns. I've seen too many balls hit the ground. It's costing the offense yards. Fair catch the ball. If you're not going to catch it, he had ample time to get up under that ball and catch it. So uh, I'm pretty sure that's one thing they're going to look at as well on film. Uh, there's a lot of things Miles can take away from this game um, that they probably could have done positively. Um, and definitely looking at that punt return, letting the ball hit the ground and roll is not what you want. They lost probably another 15 yards just on the roll. And with us, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Albany. Uh, losing yards on the uh, punt return. So, um, but um, you definitely as a punt returner do not want to let that ball hit the ground. All for the state or miles. And timeout is called by Albany. 11.56 left to play in the game and it has been all Albany, all game. They've been running it, running it, running it, and running it again. Right now they're holding on to a 34-9 lead right here on a spike. 6865 or visit trysoclean.com. Spires presentation of the SIAC Albany State on the road at Miles College with a 34 to 9 lead. James Barrett along with two time Super Bowl champion Tyrone Poole and Albany State right now trying to put this baby to bed with 1156 left to go. Started deep in their territory. But they've been there before, huh? Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter where they are on the field. They're going to run it, run it, run it. Kalen Fraze on the carry, able to get some positive yards. And right now, even though you have a 34 to 9 lead as an offense, do you still want to try to execute efficiently? Yeah, you execute efficiently. That never stops, uh, whether you're down or you're up. But here, this gives, uh, this is kind of like an offensive lineman's dream, so to speak. If they got a dream, it's to run the ball. And they actually are going to try to run the ball for the rest of this game. We got a man down, Brandon Williams, the redshirt sophomore, is down for Albany. And right now, he's getting up on his own power, and, and he's walking off. And you know what? That's a good sign when you're, uh, quarterback hits you in the head and you're walking off the field. Yeah. Even though, you know, I know coaches like, well, you know, they're hitting you in the head, you're okay. Why were you down? Yeah, it's just like uh, your dad patting you on your back and your dad say you made the old man proud. So when your teammates slap you on the back of the helmet, on the back of the shoulder pads, that's just another uh, signal that, hey, you know what, we're glad you're up. Uh, you know, uh, go to the sideline, get yourself uh, better, and get back into the game if you can. Second and five, another inside run. And able to get more positive yards is Albany State. Now, to stop that inside dive, what is it that Miles College is not doing? Is it the line or is it the linebackers that need to step up and find Habersham before he gets the ball? Well, again, remember, we talked to uh, Coach Ruff and him, himself coming from North Alabama. He understands the option. And the first thing you have to stop on the option is the dive. And that's what Habersham has been hurting them with. The dive is that guy that initially uh, the fake starts with him. The quarterback either, ha either hands it to him uh, or he gives it to him. And uh, right now, the, the defensive lineman, uh, the linebacker who's responsible for that dive, he's getting blocked. He's not getting no penetration, and that dive is wide open. And as Coach Ruffin called it, the ace, king, and queen. Mm -hmm. so right now they got a royal flush the way all the stage. Yeah, you, know, you played a little card. Yeah, card huh? Hey, black cards. You did the, uh, balls away, balls away. the spades. There it is. Pitch and catch to Harris. Incomplete. Out of bounds. Play spades? You a good spades guy? No, I was on the football. That's, why, that's how I got into the first round. I didn't play spades. I, I played on the football field, so... <laughs> While everybody else was playing spades, I was out there on the football field. Oh, <laughs> so, so while they're they're like, hey man, we going you going practice? I'm going to practice. Exactly. My <laughs> spades was the, the 20 yard line, the 30 yard line, <laughs> running heels. So, so everybody else may have been the cool guy. Cool guy. You were the guy all by yourself. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so now they're telling me, hey, I wish we had done what you were doing. Mm -hmm. So now they're going to pass that information to their kids now. <laughs> Hard work. Hard work all day. All day. 
Timeout on the field by Albany State. Coach Gardenia is trying to make sure he finishes this game in the right way looking at his play chart. 34 to 9 is your score. Now, that work ethic that you had, Tyrone, where did that begin for, on the football field? Well, you know, really, I think coming from my hometown, now, LaGrange, Georgia, uh, tons of guys have come out of LaGrange, Georgia, from baseball, uh, Mike Cameron. Uh, you know, we've had guys uh, uh, that come out of football. LaGrange was known as a you know, hotbed uh, for athletes and just the competition, the competitiveness uh, in the neighborhood. Uh, you know, you, uh, if someone wanted to challenge you in something, you know, you, hey, let's do it. You know, if it's racing, who's the fastest? You know, it wasn't a race until you kicked off your shoes. Now, when you saw it come out the shoes, <laughs> that's when you know it was serious. So the competition and the work ethic started way back in LaGrange and going to a small college uh, like Fort Valley State or HBCU, not having all the uh, accessible equipments like some of these big schools have, mm -hmm. university of Georgia, it made me now have to find tons of ways to try to uh, uh, develop my talent. And uh, I just kept that work ethic and still have it right now. I see it and I see it in most. <laughs> Second and 10 for the Golden Rams. Another inside run. This time they go nowhere fast. Now, it, has that started to wane? I know you're a father. Do, kids don't do that anymore. They don't go out in the street, in the middle of the street and start running against each other. Huh? No, they don't. Really, you know, uh, really neighborhoods have uh, uh, dwindled. You know, people are staying beside one another and don't really know who their neighbor, the neighbors are. You know, back when uh, I was coming up, uh, you know, everybody knew everyone. You know, it was to the point that even uh, your neighbor down the street could discipline you. And then when you got home, you got disciplined again. So, uh, but neighborhoods have changed uh, in, in, in this new era of uh, living. Third down and long. Another inside run by Albany. And this time we're gonna have some pushing and shoving and now the love begins. Yeah. Love, 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 it's all about love. Yeah, it's all about love. This is when you start to see the tempers flare a little bit. You know, time is running out. Um, you know, you're probably not going to win the game if you're on the losing end of our, our on the downside of a score. So um, you're frustrated. So now you just try to take your frustrate, frustration out on anybody around you. And we got a little jaw jacking going on. But no flags. I think the uh, referees understand, and you can see Coach Ruff, and he's like, nope, you're done for the day. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get the team in trouble. <laughs> All right, you're done for the day. They still these are young men, too, so oh, yeah. still got to coach them. Now, that, he, he did call fair kick. Now, how do you rate that one? That is an A-plus based off of what we've seen tonight, so the ball did not hit the ground. And when we come back, we will have 819 left to play. 34 to 9. It will be a triumphant comeback if it is one for Miles right here on a spot. And the student body right there for Miles College. I'm not sure if that's the just the SGA GA or the homecoming court, but some student officials there still rooting on their team as they trail 34 to 9. Yeah, you know when the game is out of hand is when the band is not playing. Yeah, they've kept the band quiet, real quiet today. This is HBCU football. Now, the band is where most of the time they come to see it. That's right. And when you take the home team out, it's just like uh, in any game. If you take the crowd out, so you take the band out of HBCU, oh, uh, man, it's like taking the, every, the crowd. You just shit everybody down, so... Well, 34 the, to 9. The It'll purple machine is trying to strike up something. And right now, Wilson trying to strike up a touchdown. So far, they have been kept out of the end zone. It's been three field goals by Nick Christensen, the only scoring for the Golden Bears. Yeah, and, you know, Albany, they, they are playing, you know, very good football these last uh, uh, several games, uh, minus uh, last week, uh, I believe. But uh, I'm pretty sure that defensively they want to keep uh, these guys in single digits. Keeper once again for Sidney Wilson. The young man out of New Orleans, McDonough 35 High School, able to get some positive yards. Now, the one thing about 
um, what Miles is doing. Yes, they're able to run the ball, and it looked like they're picking up yards, but the closer you get to that goal line, the defense starts to tighten up, the field starts to shrink, and, um, you know, I'm pretty sure you're going to see Albany State defense wake up and make a big play here. Wilson throwing, looking into the end zone. Interception! Great play nice. by the Dirty Blue defense. Jalen Bush, the young man from Leesburg, with the interception. Yeah, again, uh, Miles uh, trying to make a big strike here, trying to get back into the game. Cornerback reads it. Great hand-eye coordination times his jump. And uh, the shade again, he uh, actually made a great play on the uh, uh, tackle uh, for the uh, run uh, previously. And now he comes up with a big-time uh, interception that stops the drive for uh, Miles College. And for Sidney Wilson, I know he's like, it just can't get any worse. I've kept out of the end zone, and now I throw an interception. But he's a freshman, so... It's a learning process. Yeah, and also the receiver. You know, you got to be able to understand if, if if the ball is not going to get to you, you now have to become a defensive player yourself. So uh, that's the other thing. Just because you're offense, uh, you're a receiver, you're running in the nine route, the go route, if the ball is not going to get to you, you have to become a defensive player. And there is a flag, and looks like they may have either had uh, two Substitution. Men. 12 men in formation. Yep. Time out. And Coach Gardenia may have saved his team from a penalty by calling that timeout when they ran out with 12 guys out there. Yeah, usually, uh, you know, someone, they normally call, like, particular uh, offensive formations. They may say ace, uh, king, queens, uh, uh, and we're not just talking about playing cards, but these are literally uh, offensive formations and personnel. So uh, sometimes, you know, guys will be sitting on the sideline, and uh, before the offense goes on the field, they may say, hey, ace, ace uh, uh, personnel, get ready. And someone... You know, not paying attention. Uh, they've changed up the formation. They go out and too many men on the field. And make sure that you get social with Aspire. Connect on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at TV Aspire and always on the website at Aspire.tv. And this young lady, she's getting rather social. That's the new way to communicate. Everybody's got to text, text, or yeah. check Instagram and I just don't know how you just get in trouble by sending an Instagram. Yes. I, I can't get it. How do you get upset and people freaking out and <laughs> over Instagram posts? I'm, uh, no. I'm trying to learn that. Yeah, no. It's social media. So, uh, just, you know, if you get upset, walk away from it. Walk away from it. Inside run again. More positive yards for Albany State. And this time we have a new running back in. Calvin Lewis, the fifth. The fifth. He is the fifth. The fifth. I'm a third. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, he's the fifth. Oh, That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. But but here, uh, you know, gives, you know, with the score 34 to 9, you know, it's going to give a lot, of, a lot of players who normally wouldn't play, give them opportunity. So I know the parents are, are happy. Hey, that's my baby. He's out there playing. So, I know uh, the yes. Lewis family, the fifth. Yes, the fifth, the fourth, the third, and the second. They happy. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about it. I know he's wondering, like, I'm the what? The fifth? Yeah, yeah you're the fifth. It most likely is something in somebody's will. In order to get the cash, you got to have one. Yeah. Now, now, just think when he actually get an opportunity to put his name in his jersey, is he going to put the, the one and then the V? He no, he's the just one? the V. Yeah, he's going to put the V. He's the fifth. That's right, the he's fifth. The fifth. So he's just the he's V. He's going to put the V. That's it. Now, when you look at it, are you going to think, okay, is that V part of his name? Meaning, I understand that. Is that <laughs> a true. letter of his That's name? That's true. That's true. Or is that just the understanding that he is the fifth that's true. of that name? That's true. That, and you know what? You don't see a lot of fifths. Yeah. You don't see a lot of fifths. <laughs> All right. Trying to keep it on the end of round. And Johnson gets some positive yards. But let's see. He may be a yard short of the first. And we do have a new quarterback in for Albany. And Billy Cobb. And Billy Cobb is the third. Yeah, so Cobb. we have a fifth and a third. 
which makes an eighth, but we won't even count that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I think, you know, Albany, you know, right now, these guys are, like you mentioned earlier, James, they want to still execute. Mm -hmm. They run the play, they still want to get positive yards. It's not time to relax. Um, let's continue to execute. And for Miles, again, you want to see what type of heart uh, you guys are playing with when you're down and you know that you're not going to win the game. Once again, inside give, and this time the defense for Miles is all over it, and you can still see some emotion coming out from the Miles defense, even though, now see, my thing is, when you're down by that much and you make a play, and you know, you're Anthony Hardy, do you still celebrate and do all that stuff when you're down by that much? I, I, I think you, you you taper down the celebration, but you know, energy, you still have to so show some type of emotion. Now, you don't jump up and down, roll on the ground, but you gotta show some type of uh, emotion, because defense, I definitely believe, is played with emotion, so. Just don't want to be caught jumping and celebrating too long. Cobb, and he throws this one in the next week. A little bit too high there for Mr. Cobb. The third, Billy. Cobb the third. Yeah, I got the third and the fifth, uh, but, but yeah, Cobb, I'm pretty sure he's going to take full advantage of any opportunity they, they take to throw the ball. So <laughs> even if it is throwing a country mile uh, uh, over the receiver's head and out of bounds, but uh, he's just happy just to be out there playing. So it's good to see, you know, guys that normally wouldn't get in the game get an opportunity to play. So I'm um, pretty sure he's so excited. Even when the coach went to call his name. Hey, Cobb, get ready. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Where's my helmet? Where's my helmet? <laughs> there it is. Third and long. And we do have a flag on the play. Yeah, and I've got a little bit of uh, motion. My 18, all the state. Five-yard penalty. Replay third down. Chancellor's in the background dancing, and Coach Gardenia's not even looking. We know that changing how the pillow, but uh, uh, if it was the other way around, you probably would see Coach Gardenia jumping up and down. But right now, hey, we're winning, everybody's cool. Now, remember when we talked to him earlier this week, he said that he prides himself after following Joe Paterno, Gene Stallings, he worked under Nick Saban. Uh, so I think he's going to be more business like until it's. The season's over. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly, exactly. I think we talked to him about the uh, uh, being down in the south, uh, the Georgia South, and uh, wearing the uh, tie and the uh, long sleeve shirt. And like you said, that was just something that he learned from his predecessors, uh, coaches that he's been around and uh, very professional. And uh, when he actually talked about the kids, he said that um, he wanted his coaches to treat the kids, uh, the whole organization, so to speak, the uh, institution like family. Mm -hmm. And so far, this family has been able to get a 34-9 lead with 2.35 left to play in the game. And if you're Miles College right now, you got to get that family back together, get them regrouped, yeah. and, and come back stronger next week. Yeah, you definitely do. And then, like again, like you said, even though you're down, Miles College, you still have to play, even the coaches, uh, you have to play as though you're still trying to win this game. Uh, throw, uh, run, but you still have to play uh, to show not only yourselves, but your fans that no matter what the score is, we are going to fight until the clock says zero. So it'll be interesting to see what the series of plays that they call with two minutes and 35 seconds left in this game. They want to try to get in the end zone. They haven't been able to get in the end zone all game. Wilson on the keeper. And he's brought down, but not before he gains about five. Again, we saw from the last possession. Uh, here, we we'll get one there, and, and then we do try to come back and try to throw the ball. Uh, it, it, it doesn't quite work out. But, uh, uh, hopefully, they will have an opportunity to, to, to get the ball into the end zone. But the, the thing I want to see them uh, continue to do is play with effort. Play with effort. Mays on the carry, able to get a first down and about three yards more inside 
the 35 down to a 32, and they'll move the change with 153 left to play in the ball game. And yeah, talking about Coach Gardenia, uh, you know, his philosophy, you know, I definitely enjoyed talking to him. I think he uh, is going to bring a, a great uh, philosophy, a great environment, uh, plan of action to Albany State. I look forward to, you know, just the future of Albany, Albany State football. Fumble, ball on the ground, recovery, Albany State. And this should do it. <laughs> Yeah, again here, uh, the quarterback and the running back exchange. Um, quarterback pulls it out. Uh, running back might have had a little too much uh, tug on the ball, and it comes out, gets on the carpet. Albany State comes up with another turnover. Terry Compton on the fumble recovery, and Corey Peoples, the defensive coordinator for the Dirty Blue defense, he is the one holdover from the previous staff coming in with Coach Gardenia. So he knows about this dirty blue defense, the reputation, and they've had some continuity there to try to keep that defense strong. Exactly, and I do believe that you have to keep some type of holdover uh, so that the kids get familiar and they feel comfortable with the incoming regime. So anytime you have an incoming regime and uh, new coaches, uh, you know, everyone, no one knows what to expect. Uh, so to have some holdover is very important. And Coach Gardenia, he's just trying to, let's put this game to bed. Let's keep on going. Yeah, and again, I can't say enough about Coach Gardenia. And uh, like he said, his motto is to uh, tell his coaches, um, you know, to help transform the minds and the hearts of every kid that comes to Albany State. So, again, I look for a great future of Albany State football. Now, again, the one thing, like, like I said, the one thing about this coach that uh, talking to him, he said, which really stood out to me, uh, he says he asks and he demands his coaches to think of how they coach and if the players really, what they think about their particular coach. So, um, you know, it's, it's just so many great things you can say about this, this, this guy, Coach Gardenia. And, uh, you know, for Miles, you know, you're going to go back into the film room and look at this film, and uh, it's going to be hard to look at, but they have to learn from it and get ready for next week. That is correct. And for Coach Gabe Gardenia, win again, and they shake hands, exchange pleasantries between Coach Gardenia and Coach Reginald Ruffin. And right now, they stand at 3-2. and two. The two-game losing streak for the Golden Rams is over. And for Coach Ruffin, they break their two-game win streak and falter. So not a bad afternoon and evening of football for those who support the Golden Rams from Albany. And that young man right there, McKinley Haversham, a spectacular performance offensively, able to gash and lead his team to a 34-9 victory. When we come back, we'll wrap everything up right here at SIAC Football on Aspire. CashNet USA is trusted by over two. And we hear the alma mater for Miles College that they fall at home to the upstart Albany State Golden Rams 34 to 9. James Verrett along with Tyrone Poole and Tyrone what we saw was an offensive clinic on the run spread option led by Chancellor number 10 Chancellor Johnson and McKinley Habersham. Yeah Johnson and Habersham they did a wonderful job excellent job for this gun spread option offense as they call it and uh, Habersham again he is the go-to guy he showed it from the first uh, possession all the way to the end of the game and Johnson did just enough uh, to keep uh, control and captain this uh, Albany State offense into the end zone and the dirty blue as they say they did their job uh, two, nine, picks. two picks and nine points on the scoreboard so excellent job for Albany State tonight. Uh, and here at Sloan Alumni Stadium, if you're Miles College, do you just throw this game away and say, let's reset? Or do you look at the mistakes that were made? 
Well, definitely you got to reset. And I'm pretty sure um, as we spoke with Coach Ruffin, uh, defensively, you know, they're playing with a lot of freshmen and a lot of sophomores. So, um, yes, it may look bad, but the future, the bad right now, but the future looks bright for them. Uh, so I expect them to come back. Uh, they have a lot of pros on their team, uh, great coaching staff. So they're going to go back in, look at this film. It's going to be hard to look at, but they're going to find some good cues. And who knows, these guys could meet up again somewhere down the road. And let's take a look at the highlights from this game. And it started off with Albany really taking the ball. 97 yards led by this young man, McKinley Habersham. Yeah, Habersham on the dive right up the middle. You see him bobbing and weaving, cutting across the field. You got Johnson right here, goes in and scores. Uh, Miles gets on the board with a field goal, uh, but still yet not enough to try to uh, help them get into, back into the game. And Habersham gets in, and then a long pass to Takibian Harris, one of the few passes in this game for Albany State. And you see McKinley Habersham close to 200 yards with that option, loose balls. Even though it was loose, they were able to pick it up and turn negatives into positives. But the dirty blue defense able to wrap up things, but it was too much of the offense of Albany State. This gun spread option has been a God sent for McKinley Habersham. He basically had his way and defensively able to get two interceptions off of Miles College and able to get on the loose balls, which leads to hugs and laughs for Albany. Let's take a look at the final stats. Oh my goodness, 404 yards of total offense as opposed to 269 for Miles. Yeah, that's the big stat right there is that 353 rushing. And uh, Habersham, he is probably uh, uh, coming up with over half of those yards. But uh, between him and Johnson, 353, two interceptions, 51-yard passing, even though that's a low number, but you don't need to pass the ball when you're rushing for 353 yards. I mean, their inside dive was more like a long pass when you're getting 15, 20 yards each time you do it. And you see the bear there for Miles College. I think they needed him to come out and help him a little bit, but he's dancing, and the, even the chili is like, no, 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 you got to do a little bit better than that. When we come back, we'll wrap things up here from Miles College right here on SIAC on a spot. How do you? And this most likely will be the only time that young man will be running from a young lady. And 34 to 9 is your final Albany State with the win. And you see, he, look, he's running from her. He doesn't want her to have any part. Now, when he gets older, he's going to be running after her. I know. Why does he be her? So right now, he doesn't quite understand. And we were watching the purple marching machine of Miles College. 34 to 9, your final thoughts on this game, Tyrone? Well, I tell you what, um, Albany State came in and uh, they did what they wanted to do. They were a running team. They ran the ball, smashed mouth. Um, I think offensively, uh, they would go, they were pretty happy. They would go back and uh, uh, come back and uh, be ready for next week's game. And defensively, uh, I think they did everything they wanted to do as well. Miles College, of course, they're going to go back and come in uh, to the film room with uh, sad faces, but things will, uh, the sun will come up tomorrow for them as well. And for the fans here, they were looking for a three-game win streak, but what they saw was their two-game win streak in at the hands of conference foe Albany State. And for the Golden Rams, they have been able to see their team get back on the winning track and get themselves prepared to go deep into conference play in the following weeks. For Tyrone Poole and the rest of our production crew, I'm James Red. We thank you for watching the SIAC on Aspire. And remember to make sure you tune in next week for the granddaddy of classics, Tuskegee Morehouse Classic, live from Columbus, Georgia, right here on Aspire.